1919 was an auspicious year in history. The First World War ended, ushering a drastic change in the world order. The Philippine Islands had been a U.S. territory for two decades and was promised independence under the Jones Law of 1916. Progressive reformers saw the country and its people as a major target for modernization, and education was its main weapon. Seven forward-looking Filipinas came together in 1919 to create a school where young women could gain the knowledge and skills that would make them modern women. Paz Marquez Benitez was the first president of the Philippine Women's College. Jose Abad Santos was its first chairman of the Board of Trustees. Francisca Tirona Benitez was the second president and with her husband, Dean Conrado, guided the school from a house on A. Flores Street to its iconic Taft Avenue campus. In 1932, the college became a university, making PWU the first university for women in Asia founded by Asians. It provided a space where innovations in education flourished and young people were encouraged to be the best that they could be. For over 100 years, the Philippine Women's University has been known as a leader in quality education. In 1934, PWU moved into its main campus on Taft Avenue and since the 1970s has been co-educational. Located in the heart of Metro Manila, it is easily accessible by public transport and surrounded by affordable housing. Today's PWU offers undergraduate and graduate courses in several fields of study. Its business and management programs are responsive to the needs of industry using evolving technology for global competence. PWU graduates excel in arts and sciences, education, social work, and diplomacy. Its fine arts and music programs have produced outstanding graduates through a holistic education that treasures heritage as well as excellence. PWU has pioneered in fields such as food science, nutrition and dietetics, medical technology, pharmacy, and nursing. PWU continues to play an essential role in producing graduates who possess the skills that make them competitive in the country and anywhere in the world. Good morning. Welcome to today's virtual event. Please be reminded of the following netiquette for the duration of the webinar. Make sure that your microphone or audio is turned off for the whole duration of the event. Cameras should be turned on for the whole duration of the webinar. Avoid logging in and out from the virtual room. And lastly, you may post your questions or comments in the chat box. Thank you. This webinar deals with the futuristic endeavor in the field of hospitality and tourism industry. It is so timely that during this pandemic, every industry's processes and strategies have been affected and challenged. I am Irvin Villasaran, your host for today's webinar. To start the program, let us all give a moment of silence 
for the opening prayer, and this will be followed by the singing of the Philippine National Anthem. 1990. Dear Lord, here and now, in the midst of our physical distances, we know and believe that you are near. We praise you for this graced moment to once again gather virtually for the sake of continuing learning processes amidst this pandemic. We call upon you in this time of illness and challenge we may be tired and sometimes felt worn out by the pressures of the new way of living and where vulnerable lives are threatened we may be grieving the precious lives of our lost loved ones but we continue to believe and hold on in your merciful love it is in your love and your grace that we all entrust the sufferings of our world at this time. Inspire all our leaders to discern and direct course of actions wisely aligned for the common good. Reveal to us new and creative ways to come together in solidarity despite the physical distances. Call us to profound trust in your faithful presence. Breathe within us, among us, and around us. Grant healing and comfort to those who are sick with COVID-19 and grant strength to all healthcare frontliners. May we put our trust completely in you, Lord, Keep us all under the shadow of your healing mercy. And now as we begin our webinar, guide our thoughts, words, and actions so that we may walk in your path of peace, severe, and endure in this trying time. May we find comfort knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in christ jesus our lord amen At this juncture, we will be formally welcomed by our ever-supportive and dynamic Dean of School of Hospitality and Tourism Management, Dr. Ephraim Jose L. Abeliana. Thank you, Irving. Thank you very much. 
Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are at Magandang Buhay. To our university president, Mr. Marco Alfredo M. Benitez. To our university chancellor and senior vice president for academic affairs, Dr. Felina C. Young. To my fellow deans, program chairs, and all the directors of our university. And to our highly sought after speakers, welcome to PW Philippine Mission University. And of course, all our speakers will be introduced later. The DBMN 616 class, the Advanced Entrepreneur Management, with the committee chair, Edwin James from the floor, and your amazing committee heads. Congratulations, everyone, to our graduate and faculty members of Torres Centro Hospitality, Dr. Erlinda Zacarias, Dr. Haji Alegre, Dr. Edgar Moreno, Dr. Cristina Caluza, Dr. Jocelyn Sardegna and Dr. Angeline Blanco, and of course, Attorney Inigo Perez. And members, our gracious admin assistant. Good morning. And to our graduate school students here and abroad, our alumni, our virtual audience, friends, ladies and gentlemen, pabuhay and welcome to PW. Welcome to this conference. With the theme, Reinvestioning the Hospitality and Tourism Industry, Frontier, Challenges, Trends Amidst COVID-19 Pandemic. So at this time, we are still recovering our economy, we're recovering our classes, recovering our, we have so much plans for the upcoming months. And we have so much to talk about this, this, this event. And please um, just relax and enjoy because the organizers of this event are so happy. They're very, very excited to have you all in the academicians, the faculty, the tourists and professionals in the industry, enthusiasts, and all other occupations of this webinar's attendance. Thank you so much for your time. And I want you to focus your mind, your heart, this, this um, webinar and listen well to our highly esteemed resource speakers. So I commend the hard work of the, of the batch of this, of this organizing class. Thank you so much. And of course, I welcome you in advance to our programs. I'd like to promote our MS Culinary Arts program, our MS Tourism our MSHRN, of course, our doctor in hospitality management. So I want you to relax and enjoy this webinar. And of course, finally, I'd like to say thank you. Thank you so much to PW Marketing Office, the department, Ms. Ronami, Tuanyu, Madam, thank you, Madam. To our ICT head, Sir Mike Ventanilla, Sir, salamat po. And of course, Mr. Vladimir Villamor, of the multimedia centers, their technical support, we really appreciate. Thank you so much. And finally, enjoy this webinar, enjoy this event, and I welcome you to PWU, our Philippine Women's University, Mabuhay. Thank you very much, Dr. Abeliana, for that warm welcome. We are very fortunate with the presence of our university president, and it is my pleasure to introduce the President of the Philippine Women's University, Mr. Marco Alfredo M. Benitez, for his inspirational message. Our University Chancellor and SPPAA, Dr. Felina Young, Dean Prima Bellianar, Dean of the PW School of Hospitality Management, distinguished speakers and industry professionals, hardworking faculty, Students from our Doctor in Hospitality Management program, guests watching on our social media platforms from all over the country, a pleasant day to all of you. I'd like to welcome everyone to this webinar organized by our Doctor in Hospitality Management students entitled Re-Envisioning the Hospitality and Tourism Industry Frontier, Challenges, Trends, and Updates Amidst the COVID-19 Pandemic. Congratulations to the organizers for this relevant and timely webinar, particularly now that many countries, the Philippines included, have begun to open up their economies as the Delta variant surge seems to be on a downward trend. To say that the past 19 months of this pandemic have been challenging for the hospitality and tourism industry would be a gross understatement. Devastating may likely be a more appropriate word. To this day, due to quarantine restrictions for inbound foreign travelers and local travel restrictions, airline traffic is still a far cry from the volume we had pre-pandemic. According to the Department of Trade and Industry, tourist arrivals from Jan to June 2021 
we're down 96% versus the same period last year. In many of the Western countries with high vaccination rates, you've seen economies already open up and travel and tourism slowly coming back to life. Here in Asia, where the vaccine rollout has been much slower, there has been a more cautious approach to the reopening, with many Asian countries, us included, still requiring mandatory quarantine upon arrival, an arrangement which continues to discourage the influx of tourists back to our shores. There have been some bright spots, however, as some areas of lower risk classification have been able to enforce travel bubbles, which to some extent have allowed their tourist and hospitality des destinations to still accept travelers who are able to adhere to the required protocols. Just a few days ago, the IATF relaxed quarantine requirements for fully vaccinated returning Filipinos coming from green countries or countries that are considered low risk. We will likely expect further loosening of restrictions, particularly for vaccinated individuals as vaccination rates increase and more countries report fewer cases. For businesses in the hospitality and tourism industry, the past year and seven months have been all about pivoting and adapting to the ever-changing business environment, finding ways to survive and remain sustainable despite significant losses and a drastic decline in demand. The unpredictability of the virus, the emergence of variants, the transition from one quarantine status to another, the slower than desired vaccine rollout, and even the lapses in the public health response have made it nearly impossible to strategize a long-term plan. The unprecedented nature of the pandemic provided practically no blueprint for how industries were to adapt. Thus, we all just had to listen to scientists and medical experts, learn from one another and from countries that seem to have done better and hope for success. Today's webinar through our roster of distinguished speakers and industry professionals aims to share with us the experiences and challenges they faced in terms of strategic management in their respective organizations during the pandemic. We hope to gain insights as well on how best practices in total quality management in the hospitality and tourism industry have allowed these establishments to adapt and remain sustainable in these uncertain times. Last but not the least, the webinar also aims to bring us the latest trends and issues that have faced business recovery in this new normal. It is our sincere hope that through today's activity, the audience gains new and practical insights into how the tremendous uncertainties such as those brought about by the pandemic have reshaped the practice of strategic management and redefined total quality management, particularly in its significance on organization sustainability during these challenging times. So thank you very much and may you all have a very informative session. Thank you so much, President Benitez. Today, the doctor and hospitality management students aims to identify experiences, challenges of the different organizations, specifically areas such as in the total quality management, strategic management, and corporate finance. Our invited resource speakers would also be discussing the latest trends and best practices among their own respective organizations. Our invited speakers will be given 20 minutes for their respective discussions on different areas. The second part of our webinar will be the panel discussion, wherein our resource speakers can freely answer and give their insights. Today, we are very fortunate to have been accommodated by four distinguished resource speakers who would be sharing their expertise with us. To start the discussion, our first resource speaker is the founding president of the Finance Educators Association, which is the official organization of financial professors and practitioners. He obtained his academic coursework for Doctor of Public Administration and Governance at the University of the Philippines, Diliman. Earned his master's degree in business administration at Polytechnic University of the Philippines, conferred pre-master on education at Adamson University, while he received his bachelor's degree in business administration, major in banking and finance at the University of the East Caloocan. 
He strives for a doctorate degree in Business Administration Virtual University at the School of Management, Switzerland. A vanguard in innovation in financial education, pioneering academic service learning instrumental to international mobility programs in various international institutions. He also addresses CFOs during virtual summit, exclusive Encore and has achieved media mileage with ANC On The Money, CNN, DZMM Teleradio, and PTV4, Bagong Pilipinas on ASEAN Community Issues. Currently, he is part of the National Economic Protectionism Association and lifetime member of the Philippine Council of Deans and educators in business. He is also a part-time mentor of Go Negosyo. He was also appointed as Project Officer 4 under the Office of the President by the Development Academy of the Philippines. He is an adjunct faculty of Manila Titana Colleges, guest lecturer at City of Malabon University, University of Mindanao, International Business Academic Switzerland, and Widya Mandala University in Indonesia. A trainer for managers and officers of Bhutan National Bank, the Royal Insurance Corporation of Bhutan and recently lectured with its key support officials of the Kingdom government. Additionally, he is an active financial advisor of AXA Philippines. His proactive and empowered leadership elected him as Vice Chairman of the Board in Adamson University, Faculty and Employees Cooperative and Advisor of the Junior Confederation of Finance Associations, Philippines. He is fondly called as a multi-awarded business educator who rose to become one of the country's young achievers' names as an emerging guru of financial education in the Philippines. NCR Outstanding Finance Educators 2015, awarded by Deloitte and Finex Foundation. Outstanding Business Educator of the Philippines 2015, conferred by PCDEB. Outstanding Citizen of Malabon Gawad ng Pagpapahalaga Award, to name a few. Finally, his achievements were recognized by the National Financial Educator Council at Las Vegas, USA, last 2019 bestowing him the National Financial Educators Award in America. Indeed, he is a fine young man living behind the trail of achievements. Without further ado, please welcome our first speaker for this morning, Mr. Arman Vicencio Cruz. So again, once again, thank you very much for inviting me here for Dina Beliana and the uh, committee for this project and program of the PWU. So our, your team is very timely about envisioning hospitality and tourism industry frontier, doing about challenges, trends, and updates on the COVID-19 pandemic. My presentation will discuss the following as business agenda. So first, we'll go with business in crisis followed by let's go investment, okay? Then third, a risk, it can be an opportunity. Fourth, we'll go with SMSE, MSME resiliency. Then we will choose investment. And finally, we'll go about the different challenges on investment, okay? So may start with every 100 years, we actually experiencing an experience pandemic. We started with 1700 in 1720. We experienced Great Plague or over the world. And in 1800, in 1820, we experienced the full blown of cholera. In 1900, in 1920, a Spanish flu actually hit the world. And finally, this year, 2020, we hit that by coronavirus and now known as COVID-19. From that catastrophic event and pandemic, it's not only about pandemic. If you will actually see and actually discover, we have four elements in this world. Fire, air, water. And you will see from the year 2004, 
I got some photo about happening in business crisis, which is a fortuitous events or what we call an act of God. In the year 2004, Indian Ocean was highly actually heated by a tsunami. In the year 1990, we have experienced a very, very 7.929 earthquake 1990 in Baguio City. There was also a Bush Australia fire in this year 2020. And last year, the Filipino people experienced the heat of a small volcano, but actually heated the whole Luzon, which was a Taal eruption. From that version, these are also four worst typhoons in the Philippines that heated around Metro Manila, Visayas, and Mindanao. It looked like Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. This was the presentation of the Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry data last 2020. And if you will see, in the year 2008, there was a pension or prank typhoon. Then in 2009, the typhoon Ondoy at Quetzana. In 2012, the typhoon Bopa, or what they called Pablo. And in 2013, the typhoon Hyolanda and Hayan. It actually devastated the whole operations of business, not only in Metro Manila, but all over the Philippines. Earlier, I've been into discussing the world pandemic. Now, we went to the different pand uh, pandemic catastrophes or fortuitous events actually brought about by different calamities. And now, usually, we are in the ring of fire. And not only in the ring of fire, but also by the typhoon areas. Tayo ang tagasangga ng mga bagyo. Kung mapapansin nyo, sa buong silang Asia, tayo ang pinaka break, okay? At tayo ang breaker ng mga big typhoons. Other than that, we are talking about a global financial crisis. When we are talking about global financial crisis, what happened? Many banks need bailouts. There was a crisis of debt, rising of unemployment, some banks stopped lending, Banks fail, there was a crisis of asset and price inflation, credit crunch, the GDP contraction, companies go bankrupt like the Philippine airline who filed actually bankruptcy. Then consumer spending dries up and companies stop investing. This is look like your stages of your money journey. When you actually realize it, first, when you invest, you make money. After you get more and after getting more capitalization, you invest or reinvest again the money and multiply it by branching out and maintain the money. But after that, what happened? On the lower portion of this presentation, you will see that a highest level of financial risk on the part of euphoria. On the business cycle, you started with introduction, then growth, then maturity, then decline. But the challenge here is about the decline portion. What will you do or how you challenge. Because as per local literature, Emil Quinto once said, you and you alone set the limit of your performance and you and you alone set the limit of your success. Actually, ang problema ng ating bansa, hindi imperialismo, hindi komunismo, hindi din konsumerismo. Ang problema ng ating bansa ay ikaw mismo. Because you are the one who will be challenged. You are the one who will do action at the end. When we are talking about these different crises, let's go with the different pieces of crises all over the world. We should know the economic scenario. Experience that the world goes slump in the global economy in the worst crisis. In the U.S., 15 million people lost their job in 2007. Formerly, the U.S. President Federal Reserve Chairman Greenspan said 260,000 U.S. U.S. citizens actually become unemployed and unemployment rate will li likely hit double digits in the United States. Let's go now in the Philippines. There was a Mindanao crisis, not only by typhoon or earthquake, there was also a crisis on politics. After that, we experienced in the Philippines the crisis in legislative and governance with PDAP and DAP and corruption. After that, in the ASEAN countries, we also experience political turmoil, like in Myanmar. And in ASEAN integration, it's ASEAN. We celebrated and hosted ASEAN 
50 years in 2017 here in the Philippines. What happened now? We are now facing an election, national and local election, which is a challenge for global leadership and policies. In 2016, China's economic slowdown decreased global projection by major financial organizations, and there was a collapse in all prices. That's why now, when you travel, you are experiencing that all price high. Am I right? It's around 70 pesos, 73 pesos to 76 pesos kung nag-gasolina kayo kanina. After that, it's look like what Buddha said. The moment once we give close attention to anything, even a blade of grass, it become a mysterious, awesome, and indescribably magnificent world in itself. So we should know the different crises. Let's go first with the different four major cases of crisis in the whole world. First, there was an ASEAN or Asian financial crisis started in the year 1997, which is the formation of asset bubbles. And these asset bubbles actually artificial currency peg 1997, which collapses the corporate balance sheet of different company. Why? Because of poor corporate governance. That's the first major case. Second major case is actually happening and was happening. Enron and other scandal. What happened with Enron and other scandal? There was bankruptcies and conviction of perpetrators. And until now, it's happening. Then from that third major case, I hope you also uh, have read the following cases. Let's go for the third major case, the real estate. It's financial instrument and a housing bubble collapse due of systemic risk, bankruptcies, and massive financial distress. This will happen during the Lehman Brothers. That's the third major case all over the world. There was a domino effect. Am I right? Pag yung isang investor in the Philippines invests in another company in other country, and that country has a branching different financial institution all over the world, there was a domino effect happened. That was the third major financial crisis happened. And the fourth major financial crisis happened was in Europe. It's not only about Asia. It's not only about the West and the East, but it's also happened in Europe. And in Europe, there was a countries of the Eurozone that's happening and actually suffering from an excessive level of debt. And even the government cannot pay their current maturing obligation, meaning there was a default. So what happened with the default? People cannot get their claim for their pension and people cannot pay obligation. Even the government cannot pay obligation. That was the four major crises happened. Meaning, we don't only experiencing pandemic at this time. We don't only experiencing fortuitous event type wounds or earthquake. Even within the organization of corporate world, we are experiencing crisis because of us, because of the corporate level, because of the government level, both side, private and public level. From that crisis, what happened to finance as future trends? As 2017, we hosted ASEAN and ASEAN at 50. The question is, after the ASEAN framework, what happened now for the last 18, 19, 20, 21? Four years. We go now to five years, meaning it's a half decade. The challenge is, do these ASEAN countries help each other to combat the pandemic of COVID-19? Or they work just alone? Or they work hand on hand? That's a big question now. Next is, what happened to the Philippine economic snapshot? Actually, even the Philippines have improved economic macro environment. It ambit investor confidence and we have a continued reforms. We have an investment grade. We have three major investment grading happening and giving investment grade to the different financial institutions, corporate world, and even countries. The pitch rating, the standard and poor or NSP and the Moody's. So because of that, we need to do and we need to look at what is happening with an economic structure. Sino pa man ang mamuno sa ating bansa, ito yung aming pagtaya. Kahit sino pa man ang maging leader ng bansa, ito ang mangyayari sa bansa. We have a strong consumer confidence. We have a strong OFW remittances behind the pandemic because we have a strong BPO sector. But we have a weaker peso and benign inflation. 
This is our forecast, and this is my own forecast as well. Based on research and statistics and scientific data, we are entering a demographic window. From the year 2015 to 2050, that's a period of high economic growth brought about by a growing number of people entering the productive age 15 to 64 years old, meaning we are on productive years. Kahit sino ang pumalit na presidente o leader ng bansa, magiging productive tayo. Ngunit kailangan natin ng magagandang polisiya para ma-open ng ekonomiya. Kailangan natin ng magagandang leader na magbubukas muli ng ekonomiya upang buksin uli ang mga negosyo sa bansa, upang lahat ay magtulungan at upang lahat ay bumangon muli. Because from 2015 to the year 2055, there is a productive population that grew 48% outpacing the rise in dependent population. We have a productive population that will grow to as high as 69.7% in 2055. Imagine that. Our country is actually blessed by people. Look at this one. You go for China, you go for Australia, you go for Canada. They are actually an aging population, meaning marami nang namamatay. At dahil sa kanilang policy about population, wala na silang another nasaling lahi na tutulong for productive years. Pero sa Pilipinas, dahil sa dakilan yung pagmamahal sa bawat isa, dumami ang populasyon, pero ang productivity ay mas malakas. Because of that, we are optimistic with what is happening. Even we are still in pandemic, we can go far and more. From that, kita tayo sa second part. Let's go for investment. When we go for investment, kung ikaw ay may pera at gusto mong ikaw mismo diretsong mag-invest, ang tawag dito ay hard investment. Kung ayaw mo namang mag-invest na ikaw ang mamumuno or ikaw ang magsisituate ng operation from day to day at meron kang capitalization, you go for a soft investment, meaning ikaw ang capitalist. Dalawa lang naman tayo, isang industrialist at isang capitalist. Industrialist, may skills at may utak. Capitalist, may pera. Bakit hindi natin sila pagsamahin? Kung hindi natin sila pagsasamahin, you go for business venture, magtayo ka ng sariling negosyo. Kung ayaw mong magtayo ng sariling negosyo, ilagay mo ang iyong pera sa financial instruments. You go for stock market or what we call an equity market. You go for bond market or what we call a debt capital. At the end of the day, pareho kang namuhunan. Next in charge is look like this one. What is personal investment and finance? Punta muna tayo sa sarili natin because you cannot share what you cannot have in the corporate world because naniniwala ako, kung hindi mo sisimulan sa iyo ang pagbabago at hindi mo sisimulan sa iyo ang negosyo, paano ka makakatulong sa industriya ng Pilipino, ng Pilipinas at ng buong mundo? Mula dyan, tingnan natin tong research na ito. Ito ang mga financial instrument na meron sa Pilipinas na pwede kang mag-invest. You go for savings, you go for loans, you go for insurance, you go for investment. At kung mapapansin ninyo nyo na andito yung iba't ibang klase ng investment. Now, based on my research, merong mga savings account, time deposits, loans, all-purpose loans, life insurance, non-life, printed industries, insurances, BUL, money market, trust funds, tax bonds, napakaraming investment na pwede mo lagyan ng pera mo. Ang question is, alam ba ng mga tao ang lahat ng ito? Hindi. That is a big challenge. Ipaalam sa lahat ang tinatawag nating financial literacy. Ngunit subalit at natapwat, marami pa rin financial scam na nangyayari sa buong bansa. Even though with that, makikita natin what is the highest and lowest yield of interest rate. Ibig sabihin, saan ka kikita? Dahil ang kumpanyang hindi kumikita, hindi na magkikita-kita pa. Am I right? So, what is the risk for that investment? Is it lower or higher? I also put on this data. What will be the advantage and what will be the disadvantage? Ganito tayo dapat gumawa ng framework para pag pinakita natin sa public, alam nila saan ako pupunta, anong meron, anong mangyayari sa akin afterwards. After that, kung makita niyo sa savings, loan, insurance, and investment, saan mas okay? Kung mapapansin niyo, syempre gusto lahat na kumita. Ganon ang mga tao. Gusto lang kumita. Kikita ka, the question is, saan ka kikita? Una, because of your subject is about hospitality and tourism, bakit naman sa tourism pupunta yung mga tao? Because the tourism has a growth in economic activities, 
it create infrastructure development. Why we do infrastructure? Why we'll do build, build, build? Why we'll do public-private partnership? Because gusto natin ng tourism. Because gusto natin mapadali ang pag-develop or pagpupunta ng import at export sa kanilang dapat puntahan. We need more infrastructure. We need more infrastructure for airport, for transportation, and so on and so forth. The countries improve brand image nowadays. We have a source of foreign exchange earnings and the source of employment generation because of tourism. After tourism, we'll go for hospitality, hotel, and accommodation industries. When you go for hospitality and accommodation investment cycle, it's look like this one. You started with expansion stage that increased the level of the maturity. You go for the maturity to profitability level, then markets contract. Then you go for the cycle that enters recession for profit, which has a negative level, but eventually bottom out. Then as profit start to rise again and meet equal. Okay, next. From this portion, others go for franchising. If they cannot establish their own business, they go now for franchising so that there is another legality from the person or from the entity itself who introduced initially the business. If not, they go for hotel accommodation investment consideration. And now we go for risk. What are the risks? What are the risks for hospitality and tourism? We have a development risk. We also experiencing everyday, day-to-day -day operation for operating risk. And we have also an exit or existing risk at nowadays. Because of the pandemic, anong nangyari? A well-known risk of the hospitality business is the seasonal, volatile nature of occupancy and room rates. What happened? Close ang industry. Because of close, Anong ginawa ng iba? They ship. Okay? We are challenged with a paradigm shift. Anong nangyari? Imbis na ang pupunta is for needs, naging wants and the thing. So we need to consider, will you go for wants or you will go for needs? But at the end of the day, you will still earning. From that risk management, it looks like the risk reward trade off. The higher the risk of the product, the higher return potential. The lower the risk of the product, the lower the return potential. So you have the risk by choice. It's not by chance. You have the exposure by choice, not by chance. Actually, the Philippine setting for the Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industries, in partnership with the Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industries, the Department of Trade and Industry, the Philippine Exporter Confederation, the Office of Civil Defense, and the Philippine Disaster Resilience Foundation as actually promoting the, and share the best practices in strengthening the medium, small enterprises disaster resilience by mapping out the next step in promoting enterprise resilience in the country. Beforehand, nag-start na tayo ng resiliency plan sa buong Pilipinas. That what we call MSME Guide to Disaster Resilience. It's not only about pandemic, there is also a disaster. And there is also a corporate governance and political crisis happening. Dapat lahat yan pagsasamahin natin because there is a domino effect. From that person, if you have been rejected, usually because of the crisis, you always look into the negativity and that's about being pessimistic. Look what happened with Netflix and Facebook. They're having, experiencing up to now, rejection. But what happened because of the rejection? The people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do and the ones who make profit. Using an investment is look like this one. Number one, professional management transparency. Second, look for low capital requirement quality. Third, go for diversification. Third, you should go for liquidity. I, is it safe and legal? Six, do we have potential high return and profitability? Seven, will you go for convenience? And finally, 
is a solvency and sustainability innovation. We look into innovation and that innovation is look like this one. Why most people don't want to fail? They just fail to plan. What happened? Personally, it's look like this framework. At zero to 20 years old, you are actually on your learning age. The past on learning age. From 20 to 65 years old, that is your productive working years. At present, you are on your productive working years. The question is, are you getting more capital? Are you actually enhancing or getting more assets? Or you are getting more income? And from that, 65 to 95 become your dependent or retirement years. What will happen next? Kung ikaw ay hindi nag-work ng productive working years mo, aasa ka na lang sa SSS at SIS. What will happen next for the expenses? Present, malala ang healthcare problem. Kahit merong kang HMO, kahit ka merong mga health card, you need a medical inflation three to four times economic inflation. You know guys, before, last two months, I was hospitalized because of colon, okay? A chronic colon illness. Because of that hospitalization, di ba hindi ko kamukha ngayon yung nasa picture na pinakita nyo kanina? Because I'm more slim fit, okay? Parang pantalon, di ba? Kesa doon sa pinakita nyo picture. Why? During hospitalization, alam nyo ba, na ang isang araw sa ospital, I work 17,000 isang araw. Because of the isolation room, 17,000. Imagine that. I've been in the hospital for two months. No bantay. Bawal din ang dalaw. Kahit meron kang HMO, a health card, mamamatay ka sa pag-aalala sa iyong sarili because of the financial distress. After that, hindi lang health. Kakain ka din, di ba? Pagkakain kayo with hospitality and tourism, you need more and more budget. But this time, I computed only 50 pesos per meal, three times a day. Kung mabubuhay ka sa loob ng 20 years again, imagine, you need a 1.95 million. My question is, do you have now your 1.95 million to feed yourself for the next 20 years? After that, kung ikaw ay nag-ipon at nag-negosyo, meron ka ngayong gagawing gulp. Imbis na mag ka sa pensyon, mag-gulp ka na lang. Habi nila, ito nga daw ay laro ng mayayaman. Pero bakit hindi mo simulan ngayon nang ikaw ay umaman? The next challenge with us is the fourth industrial revolution. We are now on the fourth industrial revolution. What happened? Kanina diniscuss ko, apat din na years, no? 100-100 years, pandemic. Ngayon naman sa last portion, revolution naman. Revolution ng pagbabago. On the first revolution in 1700, steam water mechanical production equipment. On the second revolution, it's division of labor, electricity, mass production, assembly line. That's the challenge for management or strategic management. On the third revolution in 1900s, electronics, computer, internet, automated production. And on the fourth industrial revolution now is a cyber physical system. Kung mapapansin niyo sa first part ng presentation ko, fourth stage of pandemic, 100 years. Pero dapat ang challenge ngayon, for stage of revolution. Hindi revolution na ipaglaban ang karapatan ng manggagawang Pilipino, kundi revolution ng produksyon sa mga nangyayari sa ating businesses. What happened next? The fourth industrial revolution is all about computing, internet of things, analytics, quantum, robotics, nanotechnology, and blockchain. The question is, is the hospitality and tourism industries ready now? for this? Are you using now the QR code or what we call QR, quick response? Are you responding automatically? The challenge is do like this one. Having more and more is a business. Am I right? Gusto mong kumita para maging tao at para mabuhay. Ngunit sa theory of finance, pag ikaw ay masyadong kumikita at sobra pa sa kita, it will look like this one for making money. It's look like gluttony. It's look like a sustainable lifestyle. What you need to do is make yourself a man, a human, not a gluten man. Because of this, I challenge everybody. We open now businesses. We are now actually opening, starting opening the businesses. With the IATF resolutions, with the different health protections, 
let's support local and go global. This is what you call global. Again, let's support local and go global. That's what we call global. Tara na, balik tayo sa Pilipinas. And because of that, I would like to end my presentation. But always believe, today is better than yesterday. And tomorrow will be much better than today. Kung dati ay may problema, gawin natin tong oportunidad. At dahil sa problema, ang oportunidad ay makikita natin na merong magandang pag-asa, na merong magandang bukas na naghihintay sa bayang Pilipinas. Hindi politiko ang kailangan natin, kundi maayos na leader para sa bagong polisiya ng bansa at para sa mga pagbabago ng polisiya ng negosyo, ng polisiya ng pamamahala, at ng polisiya ng pamumuhay. Kaya sasabihin ko sa inyo, for hospitality and tourism industries, mabuhay po tayong lahat. I-welcome natin ang pagbabago. Dahil sa pagbabago, we need to have a paradigm shift. Again, I am challenging everyone that there will be much better than today. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Arman, for that excellent presentation. Ika nga, di ba, with Sir Arman. Balik tayo sa Pilipinas. So I am sure that our participants talk away valuable information. At this moment, we will now proceed to our second resource speaker. So our honorable resource speaker is currently working as a consultant in various organizations, such as the 1966 Real Estate Corporation, the Soul Beach Villas, Lafayette Luxury Suites, having expertise in business operations, development and planning, and a master trainer of the American Hotel Lodging Educational Institute. He is also a professor at St. Louis University Hospitality and Tourism Management Department. He is currently writing his dissertation for his PhD in management at St. Louis University. Prior to teaching, he has been in the industry for more than two decades, where he worked in various positions, such as baker and store attendant, and also guest service associate, operation supervisor, and banquet, and also a sales manager. He also holds several awards and certification, such as the DELF 1 and 2, where linguistic competency in French language was recognized, and certified guest service professional conferred by the American Hotel and Lodging Educational Institution and Asia World Hospitality, to name a few. In terms of professional organization affiliations, he is an active member and currently the board of director Public Relations Officer, Board of Director in Charge of Cordillera of the Council of Hotel Restaurant Educators of the Philippines, or CORIP. Member for Chedro Quality Assessment Team, or the ARQUAT. Mentor Coach for the Entrepreneurship Accelerator Cohort Program of the Erasmus Beehive Project in 2019-2020. In a long list of various positions he held. Furthermore, he is also an experienced and I should say expert resource speaker, motivational speaker, panel reactor, event host, facilitator and moderator in various seminars and conferences. It is with great pleasure to introduce our second speaker, Mr. Lee Majors Manalo Fahilan. Share my screen. This one. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes, sir. All right, good. Okay, so once again, good morning, everybody. My topic is Envisioning Hospitality and Tourism Industry Frontier on Strategic Management, Challenges, Trends, and Updates Amidst COVID-19 Pandemic with a focus on the hotel industry. All right, what is strategic management? You guys all know this very well. Strategic management is this process of setting goals, procedures, and objectives in order to make a company or organization more competitive. Most of the time, if not all the time, 
all hotels, regardless of the status, regardless of their rating and uh, you know ranking and the Department of Tourism, meron na yung strategic management plans. Usually five years, all right? Ngayon, uh, because of the pandemic, as far as I know, because I have so many friends in the hotel industry, talagang lahat halos nabura. Okay? Nabura ang kanilang strategic plans that they did two years ago, three years ago, because who knew that there's going to be pandemic all of a sudden. No? So all of these plans had to be scrapped out. All of these um, uh, team building activities, all of these corporate social responsibilities went down the drain simply because how can you do all of these things because of the pandemic? So we have to start anew. And uh, a lot of hotels that I've been trying to help, all of these Uh, all of this time, including resorts, talaga naman nahihirapan kami kasi nga, uh, especially if this hotel is situated somewhere that is really hindi naman talaga puntahan ng mga turista. You know? So may mga ganyang uh, issues and concerns. So strategic management is very important. Yes, madaling mag-set ng goals, madaling gumawa ng pr- procedures. It's very easy to come up with objectives. The thing is, how are you going to do this? How are you going to make your hotel um, competitive enough or has this competitive advantage, especially at this time, na kahit napakaganda ng hotel mo, kailangan mong magbenta ng rates na napakababa. Take for example the hotel where I am, I am right now. It's called the Forest Lodge, right beside the manor. Usually, the rates here is somewhere around 4,000 per night on a lean season. Okay. As uh, uh, lean season yon 4000 ngayon they're giving it away for 1500 per night complete with all the amenities no breakfast though but then again where would you get all of this uh, uh, how are you going to survive continuously with a rate of 1500 pesos mahihiya yung mga mumurahing hotel diyan sa manila yung mga oyo mga hop in you know all of these hotels that are no frills hotels in manila but we have to do all of these things in order to you know um be updated uh up with the trend be innovative you know innovation and trends are dictated by the environment and the foregoing events Whatever goes on, whatever is happening, what goes on, the hotel industry adjusts. You remember the World Trade Center bombings. We had to adjust in terms of security, in terms of our procedure. You have the December 2004 Boxing Day, the tsunami that affected Southeast Asia. Global warming, the reason why there is so much clamor for, um, for activities that uh, helps the environment, recession, financial crisis, all of these calamities that visit us year after year. And then here you are, the pandemic that according to Sir Arman Tanina visits us um, every hundred years. So who knew that the pandemic is going to be within our generation, that we are the ones managing all of these hotels. We have this pandemic. Sadly, The hotel industry is one of those industries that is badly affected because of this pandemic. So this pandemic resulted to the closure of hotels and restaurants. You're familiar with Shangri-La. You're familiar with Marco Polo, the legend villas. Here in Baguio, you have the Richwood Hotel and uh, temporarily closed down the Legacy Hotel, the Crown Legacy Hotel. So many of these hotels had to close Hopefully, temporary lang. Okay? What else? Um, affected many suppliers, distributors, and other stakeholders. You're familiar with the multiplier effect that the hotel industry is doing, right? Um, the tourism industry uh, provides so many jobs, not only for the people that directly works for the hotels, the airlines, the restaurants. The suppliers are affected, too. the distributors, all of the st- stakeholders that uh, surrounds us, that the, the, the value chain of these providers that uh, makes our hotel work, all right, so that we'd be able to provide our products and services, affected sila so much. Loss of jobs or irregular work schedules, ito yung sa pinaka uh, iniiyakan ng mga hotels ngayon. No? I recently opened Lafayette Luxury Suites during the height of the pandemic. And believe me, um, I started hiring people in 2019. Nagsisimula na kaming mag-training ng early 2020 
after that, biglang nagkaroon ng pandemic, good luck, nawalan sila ng trabaho. They had to wait another year para mag-open kami at the height of the pandemic. And I had to give them work schedules like three times a week, two times a week. Anong kikitain ng mga taong ito? No? So as management As part of the management, you really have to think of ways to make sure that these people are not just uh, working, but also working with motivation. Hotels that are in operation are utilized for quarantine purposes. Nagkakaroon tuloy ng stigma yung mga ibang hotels dahil natatakot sila na, oh, yung hotel mo is a quarantine hotel. Why would I stay there? Well, others offer very low rates like just what I said. Imagine the Forest Lodge, 1,500 pesos per night. The Manor Hotel, usually at the height of the Christmas season, the rate is around 12,000 pesos. You can stay in at the Manor for only 2,000 pesos per night. You know what I'm saying? So uh, it affects their brand. It affects their positioning strategies. You go to Boracay and then the Discovery Shores would normally give you a junior suite for 11,000 pesos per night. You can stay there for roughly around 3,000 to 4,000 pesos. You know, all of the general managers are crazy and then they're moving around with their with their heads spinning, thinking of the next best strategy in order to combat um, all of these pressing issues. You know, you have the 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 owners pressing a lot of, pressing a lot of issues towards your head, and then you have your employees crying out loud, saying, "We need all of these jobs." And then you have um, all of these uh, guests that would want to stay at your place or would not want to stay at your place, and then you have the government agencies that you are trying to please one way or the other. So. Our main concern remains the same, okay? Whether there's pandemic or not, products and services are enhanced or customized to attract client, attract clients and guests. Right now, usong usong staycation wherever you go, we just deal with the, with the, what do you call this? Uh, staycationers, the local residents. Uh, so talagang we have to fit in our products and services sa kanila, okay? Nakakalungkot because there are so many hotels that spend so much money on the infrastructure, the, the construction of their building. It costs them about half a billion pesos. And for you to sell a buffet menu for around 800 pesos, kahit sampung taon hindi ka magkakaroon ng re, uh, return on your investment. Nakakalungkot yan. No? So uh, during the planning stage of 2014, 2015, 2016, we were planning Lafayette Luxury Suites in the hopes that we'd be able to, return, to get the return of investment in around seven years. As the latest computation, 12 years siya aabutin. Why? Because you also have to consider na hindi lahat ng tao can afford your hotel. So you cannot really raise up the rates of hotels like uh, wh- how it used to be or what it used to be because a lot of people are jobless. You know, a lot of people cannot ac- uh, afford your hotels. So you're going to lose in the competition kung ang bibigay mong hot, uh, rate sa mga guests mo ay kagaya pa rin ng dati where all the other hotels who has nothing to lose would give rates so low. You know, so this is part of the strategies that we are trying to combat. How are you going to survive in this competition when you have a competitor that can give it all away? We don't care. You know, and you have a new hotel that put have have placed all of their investment in that uh, specific project. And then voila, you have the pandemic and everything goes down the drain. We're paying interest, we're paying all of the mortgages, we're paying a lot of uh, things in terms of construction means and whatnot. Nakakalungkot isipin, pero regardless of what na, uh, whatever I'm saying, products and services is still uh, um, enhanced for you, for our guests, for our clients. Consumer behavior largely affect the way products and services were delivered. Pandemic before, may pandemic ngayon, or in the future, ito pa rin ang pagbabasihan on how we're going to deliver our products and services. No? Hotels operate with the customer's comfort, safety, and satisfaction as the main objective. Uh, I was talking to the, um, to the management here because I was always at the last He's asked the housekeeping manager, oh, kumusta? Ano na nangyayari sa inyo? Ganyan, ganyan. Sir, walang kumang magawa. Imagine, 1,500 pesos per night. Uh, we have to make up the rooms every day pa din. Okay? So, pag papalaba mo pa lang, ubus na yung 500 pesos mo. So, meron ka na lang natitirang 1,000. So, why do you even have to operate? 
You know, why do you even have to, you know, spend up the electricity is the same. You are decorating the lobby with Christmas decorations that eats a lot of electricity, consumes a lot of power. Um, I take a bath like there's no tomorrow, you know, in here because of the warm water. So talaga naman, they still operate like how they used to be, but with a very low rate. So where is it going to lead them? What's going to happen in the next few years if this has got to continue? So at the, the bottom line also, uh, a lot of us here in the education or in the academy do not tell our students that whatever you do at the end of the day, it's all about shares, shareholders' welfare. You know, I've been teaching in St. Louis University for 15 years, two years at the Polytechnic University of the Philippines. I always tell them that it's all about the guests, it's all about the client. But when you're a consultant, when you're a general manager, at the end of the day, all of the things that you do for the guests simply is how you would want the shareholders to be happy. At the end of the day, it's all about the shareholders' welfare because you're going to get chunked. You're going to be cut off. You're going to be removed from your job as a general manager of a resident manager if you're not going to fulfill all of the things that the shareholders would want in terms of revenue, in terms of delivering the, their return of investments. You know what I'm saying? So, napaka um, uh, tinde ng pag-strategize mo in order to be able to answer all of these pressing issues left, right, up, and below. Okay? So, the challenges providing continued work for the employees, nakakalungkot, may mga employees that comes into work seven days a month, uh, may mga employees that reports to work every two weeks, may mga employees na ayaw mo silang tanggalin, ayaw nilang mag-resign, so kailangan mo silang irigo doon, so sa lahat sila may duty, kaya naman they just have to uh, rotate their schedules. So ang sinisweldo na lang nila, 1,500, 2,000, 3,000. Anong magagawa ng 3,000 pesos a month sa mga taong ito? But he wanted to keep them kasi saan sila pupunta? Okay? Wala pang mga abroad ngayon. No? Unless you're a nurse, di ba? You're highly in demand all over the world. Maintaining employee morale, napakahirap yan. We always talk with the HRD people, the human resources managers. How do you maintain employee morale at the time when there's pandemic? Kaya mahihirapan na talaga. Imagine, um, obserbahan mo. If you're the type of person like me who always checks in the totals and observe the people around me, they're no longer the usual people that will give you their smiles, their happy faces you know they're just there to just say hello say goodbye we'll give you the key check in na po kayo nobody will assist you with your luggage because they couldn't even enter the room um for some hotels make up room will be once every time you check in let's say you're checking for four nights once lang make up room okay so may mga ganun pang nangyari it's very difficult to maintain employee morale at this time na hindi mo sila mabigyan ng pera hindi mo sila mabigyan ng karampatang sweldo okay pati yung mga employee meals natin tinitipid na natin because all of these things has burden on our budget on our um, operating um, expense no so Ito yung mga challenge natin. Uh, kaya mahirap mag-demand ngayon. Meron kayo makikitang mga memes sa Facebook na be kind to your servers, be kind to the restaurant servers because they're the ones who reported to work while the others did not. Diba? So returning owners investments is very, very difficult, especially for new hotels that have opened during the time of the pandemic. But you'll be surprised when I tell you guys huh, that as of the moment, here in Baguio, there are three hotels being built as of the moment in construction phase and there are two under planning all right so there's uh, according to visionaries and i'm one of those visionaries that think that there is really a future for tourism industry simply because despite the fact that there's pandemic two years already meron pa mga buildings or hotels that are being constructed so there's hope there's future we always cling to the notion that people are already very excited to go back out there and travel the world and see various places because they've been locked down for so long, you know? So hopefully that is where we cling on. That is the mantra that we hold on, that people are excited to go back to traveling. Meeting financial obligations obviously is very difficult nowadays. You don't have guests. Uh, no matter how much you lower down your prices, at the end of the day, wala pa rin guests because of our government restrictions happening left and right, changing every 15 days. 
hotel maintenance and upkeep. Paano mo ma-maintain ang iyong uh, hotel kung wala ka naman talagang mar- maraming empleyado? You know, you have to do make-up rooms every other day. Pagka-check out mo ng room, itatouch nila ito after a day or two pa because they're scared of COVID, you know? So what's happening with our hotels? Um, um, not many people are maintaining it. Um, glad that Glad to know that there are some hotels that utilized the pandemic situation for them to refurbish or renovate their hotels. Thank goodness they have a lot of money. But what about those hotels that did not have anything at all, you know, or were not at all prepared for the pandemic? So literally they had to close down. So these are some of the challenges that we had to experience. Compliance to over changing national and local government health protocols and restrictions. Okay, buti na lang malapit na yung... Uh, Uh, ito, election, kaya medyo nag ease ang ating uh, uh, health restrictions, ang ating health protocols, di ba? Medyo nag-open na yung ganito, wala na yung masyadong RTC-PCR, magbigay ka lang ng vaccination card, etc. Pwede ka na mag-check-in, yung mga ganong bagay. This could literally help a lot of hotels uh, go back to the normal situation, hopefully sooner. So imagine all of the things that we as hoteliers have to go through every now and then. DOT would have to check your premises. Meron ka lang big event, kailangan mong report sa city government of Baguio para bisitahin nila kung you're following your, your protocols. And mind you, every time that there are health protocols or restriction, it affects us financially speaking. It affects our budgets. Okay? Yun lang simple na, oh, kailangan nyo magpalagay ng mga uh, barriers sa yung mga dining area, yung mga acrylic ba na plastic. Uh, mahal din yun, ha? O oh, yung front desk mo, lagyan mo acrylic. Yung buffet mo, lagyan mo ng acrylic. The, the 30% capacities on restaurants, the 50% capacities on hotels, hindi ka pagkapag-operate ng buong buo, but at the same time, you still have to maintain the number of guards, you have to maintain the number of um, housekeepers. At the same time, you have to uh, open up all the lights, the elevator still functions, things like that. Imagine, di ba? Pero ang capacity mo lang 30%. So strategies has to be implemented in order for you to, you know, be able to balance the situation. mag operate ka, pero ito yung restriction mo, pero ito yung budget mo, pero ito yung dapat mamit mo. So all of these things has to come into place and uh, it's causing a lot of general managers sleepless nights, I'm telling you. <laughs> so what are the current operational trends? Despite the pandemic, there is still clamor for sustainable operations. So imagine if trees gave off Wi-Fi signals, we would be planting so many trees and probably save the planet too. Sadly, my house is um, damaged by a tree, a pine tree. It fell on my roof. I posted it on Facebook. I, I'm not sure if you guys have seen it. Um, The engineer said, I'm going to spend 150,000 pesos just to renovate the roof and the ceiling of my house. My goodness, 150,000. All of a sudden, last week lang pa, easy, easy lang ako. I'm already preparing for Christmas. And here you are with Maring na Bagyo. Biglang binagsak yung isang branch dun sa bubong ng bahay ko. And I have to spend 150,000 pesos. But I still love my trees. My house is still surrounded by trees, you know. Um... Uh, despite that, um, here in Baguio City, it's very important that when you cut down a tree, in order for you to build a, a property or an establishment, you have to replace it with, I don't know, 300, 600 seedlings of trees, which is really very good because this is what we need here in Baguio City. This is what we need in mountainous areas, in hillsides, and because uh, the importance of trees. So there's this clamor for sustainable operations. So hindi naman nakapaloob dito sa sa aking topic so I'm not gonna dwell so much on the sustainable operations but I'm into sustainable operations per se so even when I help hotels design their hotels talagang lahat ng operations mo lahat ng movements mo pagluluto mo pag aircon mo pag uh, the, the circulation of the air in the rooms lahat yan kinukonsider ko in order for the hotel to be a sustainable hotel why? because at the end of the day strategy pa rin, sustainable operations is good for marketing 
right? And nowadays, if you infuse, tell the people that my hotel is sustainable and we're operating very well and we're environmentally friendly, people believe you and then they stay at your hotels. So may mga kaakibat yan ng mga strategic lineups. No? So operations, marketing, management, at the end of the day, sustainable operations mean less money on your operational costs. Okay? So there's clamor for that. Corporate social responsibility. Who are you responsible, uh, who are you responsible to? You extend help and livelihood for displaced employees. Last year, wala ka nang income, wala ka nang kita. Somehow, you still have to help your people na papa, hindi mo papapasukin ng ilang panahon. Imagine, no? from March to about October, November of last year, up to about Christmas time, tinutulungan mo yung empleyado mo. Binibigyan mo sila ng ayuda. Di ba? Maraming hotels yan. No? I... I told hotels, you can do that. May nagtatanong, dapat ba? Opo, dapat po. Kasi yung mga taong yan, uh, they can badmouth you. <laughs> you know, your employees can ruin you or can break you. At the end of the day, these employees are also your customers. And at the end of the day, these employees have so many friends on Facebook and can literally badmouth you. And at the end of the day, again, I'm telling you, you have to help out those, these people. Kasi sila pa rin yung tutulong sa'yo eh. Kasama mo yan nung ang taas-taas at ang tayog-tayog mong nag-ooperate ng hotel. Tapos biglang nagka-pandemia, goodbye na silang lahat. But even the CSR can cost hotels a lot of money. And it did. But thank goodness, hotel owners, majority of, the, majority of them, not all of them, are very kind, are very helpful. You know, extending help and livelihood to the immediate community. Yung barangay mo, kumakatok yan araw-araw, humihingi ng tulong, pagpapaprint ng ganito, humihingi ng printer, humihingi ng pampagawa ng poso. Believe me, all the while I thought these things never exist. But the first ones that this is gonna ask for your help, okay, would be your immediate barangay where your hotel stands up. Okay, so sa talagang sila yung uh, kailangan mong tulungan. So, And it's going to be a burden on financial matters. But then again, if you do not help them, they're going to make sure that your life is going to be a living hell. No, malaglagan, may mabasag lang na bintana dyan, tas may masugatan sa baba. Lagot ka sa barangay mo kung hindi ka close sa barangay. Ikaw ang sisisihin yan. Medyo bumahal lang dyan sa kanila ang sisisihin yung hotel na malaki. Di ba? Pero kung lagi mong tinutulungan yung barangay mo, kahit anong mangyari, ang banga-banga mo sa barangay. Bubulungan ka lang yan, oy, next time po, wag na kayo magkakos ng traffic sa kanto. You know what I'm saying? So all of these things, in order to make it like a win-win situation, be helpful to your barangay or to your community. Extending help to those in dire need during calamities. Sad to say, even in my studies, it would say that um, hotels help people who are in need of calamities for marketing purposes. True enough. Hotels do that for marketing purposes para may mag-post sa Facebook, para maging mabango sa social media. But uh, despite the, the, the reasons why you do it, there's a good thing that happens. You know, the ends justify the means or the means justify the ends. It depends on how you're going to um, take things into consideration when all of these things have to be done. No? So corporate social responsibility, yung kanina, yung sustainable, clamor for sustainable operations. Ano pa? Staycations, we have to deal with the locals. So sad, but uh, the borders aren't open so well yet or are not widely open for the local uh, for the other uh, tourists. No, So higher levels of sanitation and cleanliness. Ito yung sinasabi ko na talaga naman uh, yung chemicals ng mga hotels, it cost them a lot of money. Alcohol pa lang. Uh, dito sa Forest Lodge, they have this packet No, ito ay hindi makita. Okay? So ito yung uh, sanitation packet nila. May alcohol, mayroong um, uh, face mask, mayroong kung ano-anong bagay na yan. No? So we have to spend on all of these things. Uh, we have to ask uh, the local government to give us certifications. Otherwise, we cannot operate. Uh, they have to inspect everything. The, the occupancy, like what I said kanina, 50%, 30%, hindi mo pwedeng pa-occupy yung mga rooms mo na tabi-tabi. Dapat magkakaloyo. 
Okay? So, ano pang effect niyan? Yes, yes lang tayo ng yes sa government. Sasabihin natin, sige po, we will do it. But sa totoo lang, kung ang rooms mo na pinapa-occupy ay layo-layo, my goodness, ang empleyado mong dadalawa, tatatlo, pagod na pagod. No? I-make up yung room 101, ang susunod na i-make up niya 104 kasi hindi pwedeng tabi-tabi. Di ba? Um, come to think of it, During the normal days, pagka nag-operate ka ng hotel as much as possible, you block your guests almost near to each other. Okay? Para kung ang isang floor, walang guest, makakatipid ka ng kuryente, hindi mo bubuksan yung ilaw doon. Isang floor lang yung may mga ilaw. Ngayon, dahil sa pandemya, hiwa-hiwalay dapat yung mga guests. They're scattered all over the hotel. Therefore, all of the hallways, all of the, the public areas has to be well lit. And it affects us. Okay? So, isa na namang burden. Pero still, we have to do it because we need to operate. We need to have these certifications. Mahigpit ang Department of Tourism. Mahigpit ang local government. Contactless hospitality, yung mga tinuturo natin sa mga estudyante natin, you always have to be smile, smiling. You have to be pleasant. You have to be courteous. Ngayon, hindi mo na marinig yung mga staff because you couldn't hear them. Meron ka ng um, barrier. Meron ka pang face mask. Minsan, naka-face shield pa. Paano pa kayo magkakaintindihan. Di ba? So, contactless hospitality, I hope we go back to the to how it was like before because we we miss our smiles. There's nothing, nothing can ever replace the warmth of the human touch. Di ba? Robots cannot replace us. Okay? Kaso, para na rin tayong mga robot ngayon. Here's your key, sir. Your room is 348. Enjoy your stay. Bye. That's it. Sir, please stop your payment here. Sir, please pay us through GCash. Sir, ganito, ganyan, ganyan. Yun na lang. Hello, you're checking in. Wala nang mga... Uh, wala na. Hanggat maaari, kung pwede kang umalis na sa lobby, umalis ka na. Di ba? Kasi nga, they cannot entertain you so much because you have to keep distance from the staff in the hotel. What else? Digital guest experience. Yes, the quick response, the QR code. We're using that a lot. Um, may isang hotel ako nakapag-check in na. Nasa bahay ka palang naka-check in ka na. Tapos yung susi mo, nasa phone mo na. No? So, hindi ka nadadaan sa lobby. From the basement up to the room, wala ka na makikitang staff. Itatapat mo na lang yung uh, phone mo dun sa sa doorknob and then mag-open na siya. Malalaman na lang ng front desk na check in ka na and makikita mo na lang na nakapay ka na. Ah, this is something weird for me because I'm very traditional and all of these years my training was in the hotel industry. I'm the one of one of those people who have to chit chat with the guest who has to smile with the guest who has to make sure that the guest is enjoying their stay etc etc but you know pandemic has literally divided all of us has separated all of us families divided we sabi ko nga naiisip ko because i had covid in march and i was i had severe covid to the critical point and i almost died in march 20, uh, march 16 because my oxygen oxygen level was really going very very low and sabi ko ang napakalungkot pa lang mamatay during the time of pandemic why because for a year hindi ko pa nakita yung mother ko yung wala pa akong walang christmas party walang eh, walang birthday celebrations wala No, so you're gonna die without even meeting your families for the longest time. So can you imagine those who died without having their last birthday celebrations happen because of the pandemic? So I hope we'll go back to uh, the norm and sana matapos na itong pandemia. One of the challenges that we have to do right now or that we are doing right now is hiring multi-skilled talents because ang gusto natin yung isang tao can perform so many tasks. Di ba? Para makatipid tayo. Yun lang naman yun. The bottom line is for the hotel to be save, to be able to save as much money, yung kakarampot na makikikitain natin sa mga bababa nating rates, sa mga food rates natin, kailangan natin yung itabi for the rainy days. So what do we need? We need employees who can do so many things at once. You know, the ones who assisted me here sa pag-check-in was the security guard. Okay, the security guard who greeted me at the at the front was the one who assisted me in parking my car at the back, and then who 
insisted that he carried my big bag and then left it outside. So siya na rin yung bellboy. You know, so if you have a marketing associate who can also be a photographer, who can also be good at Canva or graphics, then hire that person. That's what we do. You have a chef that is also a vlogger, a foodie, a columnist, a celebrity chef, so marketing all in one. So lahat ng mga bagay na iisipin mo, we're looking for talents of people that can do front desk at the same time can answer the phone who can also make up the room. You know what I'm saying? But this is how things are going on in the hotel industry because we would want to uh, save as much money as we can. Okay? And then one of the things that we hope to be over soon is are the limited gatherings. You have a, a function room that can accommodate about 200 people, pero sabi ng government, dapat 50 packs lang, 70 packs lang. Magkano na lang yung kikitain mo yan? Okay? So therefore, a lot of uh, gatherings na dapat medyo malaki siya and can bring you a lot of revenue at the end of the day, wala na rin, no? Kasi nga, very limited. Okay? So yung iba sa bahay na lang, sa instead na sa hotel. So we're losing a lot of business, so to speak. Okay? So what are the implications? Cost cutting, skeletal workforce, work from home, again, Madaling sabihin, pero iisipin mo if you're a strategic manager, you would have to think, masaya ba ang tao mo? Masaya ba ang empleyado mo? I even heard a lot of threats from our chefs, from from um, from people in the food and beverage saying na, naku, once na mag-open ang mga barko, magbabarko na lang ako. Diba? Naku, once mag-open ang Dubai, mag-a-abroad na lang ako, pupunta na ako ang Dubai. So we're losing a lot of talented people, a lot of our uh, hardworking people because of this cost cutting. And then at the end of the day, malungkot din sila, sinisiraan ka pa, sisiraan ka pa. Ah, dyan sa hotel na yan, ang ulam lang namin araw-araw, uh, galunggong at munggo. <laughs> you know? But... Um, that's why a lot of hotels I know around the area even provide free board and lodging na lang din. No? Here at the Forest Lodge, yung kanilang management team, naka-check na sa hotel. Okay? Iwas na rin sa makahawas sila ng mga COVID dyan sa labas pa uwi-uwi. So dito na rin sila nakatira sa hotel. No? Effect on product quality? Yes. Uh, um, meron akong isang friend na nagmamayari ng uh, bakery uh, yung kanyang pandiko ko na dati ganito kalaki ngayon maliit na lang siya at the same price no so yung mga ganung example uh, sometimes uh, instead na um, yung maganda yung packaging ng cake mo ngayon nakakarton na lang wala pang tatak you know so sometimes the product uh, there's an effect on the product quality when these things are happening. What else? Effect on service quality, syempre. Um, given na yan, walang masyadong tao eh. Mag-expect ka pa ba ng mabilis na makeup room? Mag-expect ka pa ba na madali ang room service? Or don't even expect a room service. Walang room service kalimitan sa mga hotel ngayon. Now, swerte mo na, makachamba ka ng hotel na they would really deliver breakfast to your room but most of the hotels won't even do that because of the scare of the pandemic. Managerial constraints overall, these are constraints in the managerial processes, constraints on us. Um, yeah, it's uh, mind-boggling. We cannot wrap around yung aming utak sa pag-iisip paano na, paano na, paano na. No? Ano nang mangyayari? Delays on the um, return on investments. The owners would have to understand these situations. Uh, uh, we were thinking last year, nako, don't worry, 2021, okay na yan, wala nang pandemia. Eh, magta-2022 na, ano kayang mangyayari? Maintaining competitive edge, no? Mag-maintain ka ng competitive edge despite all of the things that I've mentioned. Okay? So what are the updates? Don't worry, guys. I'm going to give you a lot of positive thoughts even though medyo depressing walking presentation. But I'm just giving you the realizations, the reality of what's going on in the hotel industry. Domestic and international travel restrictions are slowly being lifted or eased. No, may mga friends tayo sa Facebook nakikita ko, wow, nagpunta na siya sa America, nasa Dubai siya ngayon, nag-check in na siya sa hotel. And I'm really very excited because they're easing down on travel restrictions. Destinations are slowly over 
opening. Uh, hopefully, Baguio will open soon. Uh, Boracay is open. I know uh, Cebu, I'm not sure. Uh, hindi ko pa siya nababasa. Pero yung Boracay, uh, nabalitaan ko, medyo pwede na siyang puntahan ngayon. Hotels are getting used to the new normal. Ito na yung nagiging new normal natin. No? Medyo... Uh, sasanayin na lang natin yung sarili natin na ito na yung new normal. Pero sana, they would have to maintain that hotels are providers of utmost hospitality. Kahit anong pandemya, dapat i-maintain natin yung warmth yung nothing can ever replace that warmth that we give to our guests. Sana yun ang hindi mawala. And sadly, a lot of hotels that I stay in, I stay at, medyo cold na yung mga guests. Siguro ay mga empleyado, siguro hindi na makahinga dahil sa mask or sa face shield nila, hindi na talaga sila makangiti or makapagkwento man lang or whatever. Okay? So people are excited to travel again. Ito yung pinanghahawakan ng Department of Tourism, yung kanilang uh, revive, uh, revival of the tourism industry, uh, the bouncing back of the tourism industry. Well, who knows? It's just only a matter of time. So with that, I thank you all very much for the attention and I really enjoy talking to you guys. Have a nice day, everybody. All right. So thank you so much, Mr. Lee, for giving us thank a you. realistic view on how the hospitality industry is um, adjusting and adapting to the new normal. Also, the latest trends and best practices at the time of pandemic. And also, the pandemic has indeed drastically changed um, hotel operations. And however, the industry would strive to survive and move forward as we had from the past. We can proceed now to our third resource speaker. So... For this morning, our third resource speaker is an expert and external auditor of the ISO 9001 Quality Management System, 14001 Environmental Management System, and ISO 45001 Occupational Health and Safety Management System at Socotec Certification Philippines Incorporated. Currently, he is also a part-time professor at the St. Benil International School and senior high school teacher as well at the Asian Computer College. He formerly worked as the property head at the University of the East Ramon Magsaysay Memorial Medical Center and held a senior purchasing officer position at the Panasonic Precision Devices Philippines Corporation. He graduated with a Bachelor of Science in Commerce major in management and also acquired a master's degree in business administration where he was recognized with a high academic excellence award. A spirited, dynamic, and hard-working young professional with over 12 years of strong background in purchasing and inventory management and also extensive exposure to third-party auditing focus on international standards certification of various management systems. And I am very delighted to introduce to you our next speaker for this morning. We have Mr. Erwin F. Quinto. Welcome, sir. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, sir. Uh, hopefully, I'm loud and clear since we are talking about the challenges. So, yes, I'm, I think I'm challenged, yes, challenged right now no, to be the surprise next speaker. But nonetheless, I'll be presenting to you my screen. No, I mean my file or my presentation. But before that, let me greet everyone. A nice morning. No, I have read the profile of the attendees today. And some of you no, are affiliated with uh, schools or SUCs that I have audited in the past. No, so I don't know if you are if you have heard my name already, but again, I'll be talking about the total quality management, uh, total quality management, but this time focused on quality management system or the audit of ISO 9001 version 2015. No, no, hopefully, no, most of you or uh, all of you are aware of this quality management system. No, I I hope may background po tayo. Okay, so let me share my screen. Okay. Is it now visible? Yes, sir. Clear. Thank okay. You. Thank you. So my topic is about the auditing of quality in the new normal. So an ISO approach you know, on, on this uh, seminar or webinar. 
Okay? So why do we need to implement quality management system or yung total quality management then. No? Because as customers, obviously, we demand quality. We want quality in the things we buy or in the services that are being provided to us. And of course, if we are the providers, we also need quality because we need to keep existing clients happy. We need to get new clients. And of course, we want profit to stay in the business. Okay. So let's talk about first what is quality management system. So a quality management system is a management system regarding quality set of interrelated or interacting elements of an organization to establish policies and objectives and processes to achieve those objectives. And without quality management system, or if we are not practicing quality in everything that we do, especially in the business, be it in hospitality industry or in any industry, this might be the risks that we can encounter. So some of some of these are increased costs, inadequate resources, high maintenance costs, project delays, employee frustrations, etc. Again, these are the possible risks that you may encounter if you will be neglecting quality in the outputs that you are doing. So in order to have an international recognition, some of the organizations apply their QMS or their quality management system for an ISO 9001 2015 certification because the latest version now is the 2015 version and the previous or the uh, last version before this one is the 2008 version. Okay, so but, uh, but what is ISO? No, Some call it ISO, but I call it or I prefer calling it as ISO. No? ISO derived from the Greek word, Greek word ISOS, meaning equal. That's why I'm calling it as ISO. Although the name stands also for International Organization for Standardization, headquartered in Geneva, Switzerland. So ISO certification certifies that a management system, manufacturing process, service, or documentation procedure has all the requirements for standardization and quality assurance. ISO is an independent, non-governmental, international organization that pro uh, develops standards to ensure the quality, safety, and efficiency of products, services, and systems. So ISO standards are in place to ensure consistency. Each certification has separate standards and criteria and is classified numerically. That is why when I was introduced a while ago, that I am not only a lead auditor for ISO 9001 version 2015 or the quality management system, because there are a lot of ISO certifications. I mean, management systems. We have the 14,000 focused on environment, and we have also the newest no, ISO standard, the 45,000, previously OSHA's 18,000. So we have it now as ISO 45,000, which is the Occupational Health and Safety Management System. If an organization builds themselves as ISO 9001 certified, this means that organization has met the requirements designated under ISO 9001. ISO 9001 requires organizations to define and follow a quality management system that is both appropriate and effective while also requiring them to identify areas for improvement and take action towards those improvements. When you are implementing your quality management system, the main focus are uh, two matters. No? First is for customer satisfaction. And the second one is for you to identify your areas to improve or your areas for improvement. So as a result, it's typically understood that an organization claiming ISO 9001 certification is an organization with products or services that meet quality standards. That is why no, in commercial, makikita ninyo or maririnig ninyo, some of the uh, companies are claiming that they are ISO certified because they want to, to be proclaimed that they are practicing quality in their products or even in their processes. So the foundation of ISO 9001 2015 are this seven. First, customer focus. Again, now we are implementing quality management system because we want to satisfy our clients or our customer. Second, leadership. This is the difference between the 2015 version of the standard as against the 2008 version because yung leadership dito is uh, very strong. No? Kailangan yung participation of the top management is very evident. Their commitment to implement the quality management system is also evident. Second and uh, third, engagement of people and process approach. Because when we do audit the quality management system, it is focused on the processes. 
that the organization has. Okay? And of course, the engagement of people, no? especially the people who are performing their processes. Fifth, improvement. Again, you have to identify areas for improvement. Six, evidence-based decision-making. Now, because there are uh, documents or evidence required to be maintained or to be retained by the international standard. And lastly, relationship management. Okay, so the implementation of UMS should be process approach using the PDCA cycle. Now, I don't know if you are familiar with the clauses of the standard because we have 10 clauses of the standard. Of course, in order for us to have this full cycle, we have the inputs, the process, and the outputs. And the inputs would focus on the requirements of clause 4 of the standard which contains the understanding of the context of the organization. So basically, all of the organizations should know their context. And of course, they have to identify their interested parties, you know, the relevant interested parties, and of course, they have to satisfy the needs and expectations of these interested, uh, interested parties, and that includes the products and services of the customers. Okay. Then in the middle of this, in the process, we have leadership. Again, this is about the top management who should be committed in the implementation of the quality management system. So in order for us to implement the PDCA or the plan, do, check, and act, no, planning. No, so uh, during planning, we will be identifying all the risks. No, sorry, my internet is unstable. No, so uh, please mention if I am uh, a bit static on your part. Well, so okay far, um, loud and clear. Yes, so far, doing good. Okay, so again, so again, we are in planning. No, so you have to plan, and the planning includes the identification of your risks and opportunities. No, na mention yung kanina ng first speaker. No, it is very important for us to identify the risks and opportunities on a macro level, and of course, on a micro level. Then after that, we will do the uh, the do. No, you do sa PDCA natin, and that is focused on the support and the operation or yung core process po natin. Then, we will proceed with the checking. That is the performance evaluation. And dyan po papasok yung ating internal and external auditing. And after that we conducted the audit, then we will have or we will uh, analyze all the findings for our improvement. Then it will be included again in our next plan. And of course, our output would always be our products or services and the satisfaction of our customers. So the thinking is that if a company clearly identifies the risks it faces in business, as well as the opportunities that exist, it can then put in place management processes and practices, a systematic process of plan, do, check, and act that will minimize or eliminate the risk and maximize the benefits to be gained from opportunities. Again, this is also the main difference of the 2015 version of the ISO 9001 as compared to the 2008 version because the 2015 version is explicitly a risk-based approach because we have to identify all of the risks, again, not only on a ma uh, micro level, but also on a macro level. And after identifying this risk, we have to minimize them or at least eliminate these risks. And we have to put controls. Okay, for this to be eliminated. And for the opportunities that we have identified, we have to maximize them for us to achieve these opportunities. Okay? Then clearly, this thinking must be the purpose of and intended results from QMS. So before developing a quality management system, the organization needs to completely understand its external and internal interested parties and their needs and expectations in the context of its products and services and its business strategies. This is being required by clause four of the international standard. Again, you have to identify who are your interested parties, your relevant interested parties, and what are their needs and expectations from our organizations and from our quality management system. Second, we have to completely understand the risks and opportunities that these represent. And lastly, we have to plan the quality management system in such a way as to attempt to ensure that the quality management system addresses each of the risks in the best possible way within the context of the organization. Again, you will not be only required to identify the risk, but you also have to provide controls to address this risk, or at least to eliminate or minimize this risk that you have identified. 
So the top management plays a significant role in driving the quality management system and is accountable for the success of quality management system. Again, if you are familiar with the standard, the, uh, before it is being required that organizations should have their quality management representative. But with the 2015 version, hindi na po ganun ka, kalaki yung requirement no? for AQMR, but the participation of the top management should always be evident. And the top management shall ensure that policy and objectives are compatible with context and strategic direction. Again, if you will be applying your quality management system for ISO certification, then you have to provide a quality policy. Okay. And the third, uh, other relevant management roles need to demonstrate their leadership in the QMS in their respective areas, not only the upper, upper, sorry, upper level management, but also the middle level or the lower level management. They uh, they are expected also to perform their duties and responsibilities. So resources in the form of people, infrastructure, and environment for the operation of the process, monitoring and measuring resources, and organizational knowledge are to be determined, provided, and maintained. So all of the resources required for the implementation of your quality management system should be provided. And that will also measure the commitment of the top management if they are able to provide these resources necessary for your implementation. Next, competence to perform the work should be determined and provided, then evaluate effectiveness of actions and retain documented information. So you have to ensure that your people in the implementation of your quality management system are competent enough now, in the performance of their duties and responsibilities. And there are ways no, to strengthen their competence. You can provide training. And when you provide such, then you have to maintain documented information as required by the international standard. Then persons doing work should be made aware of the policy, objectives, their contribution to the effectiveness of the quality management system, and implication of not conforming with the UMS requirements. So basically, all of the people working you know, towards the implementation of your management system should be aware of your quality policy and, of course, should be aware of their set targets and the consequences that may arise if they will not be following your quality management system. Then determine what documented information it needs to maintain and retain, how to create, update, and control documented information. Because there is a particular requirement in the standard that you are going to maintain and retain uh, several documents no, as required. So essentially, focus on establishing various controls for processes. These controls should be based on identified risks and opportunities. Again, all of our identified risks should be provided with effective controls. The organization is required to determine what and when will it be monitored and measured, establish the methods to do this, as well as the analysis and evaluation needed to ensure valid results. All of the units or departments should be uh, crafting or setting their relevant objective or quality objective. And once they have identified their target, then they have to provide an, uh, an appropriate monitoring tool you know, that could say whether they were able to achieve the target or not. Then evaluation of performance of and effectiveness of quality management system will be conducted. And uh, this is uh, through internal audit. Okay. So hopefully the organizations are conducting their internal audit if they have their quality management system and if they are submitting their quality management system into ISO certification. Then customer satisfaction shall be obtained, monitored, and reviewed, and analysis and evaluation of data information shall be conducted. So you have to regularly get the customer satisfaction and analyze the results of your customer satisfaction. And if there are negative feedback, then you have to provide actions to address the issues coming from our customers. Okay, Again, not just only to get satisfaction, but also to address the issues that you receive from your customers. Then, top management shall review the effectiveness of quality management system via management review. There are specified inputs and outputs of the top management, and the top management is expected to provide outputs for our man, uh, management review inputs. Clear pa po ba ako so far? Hello? Yes, sir. So far, um, first day okay. of uh, clear. Okay, kasi may naririnig ako baka po ano. Okay, so the organization is required, again, to continually improve. And in the event of non-conformance, the organization shall implement 
Okay. Shall implement correction, corrective action, and evaluate the effectiveness. So once you've conducted your internal audit and you have findings, say for example, you have non-conformity, you have observations, then you have to put no, or to create at least a corrective action report wherein it will contain the root cause analysis and of course the actions. And once these units or departments have provided actions, then you are compelled to review the effectiveness of actions that they have provided to address the non-conformity raised to that particular unit during the internal audit. So these are the principles or seven principles of auditing. First, integrity, the foundation of professionalism. So if you are an auditor, no, so expect that you have this uh, good integrity no, in the conduct of audit. Second, fair presentation, the obligation to report truthfully and accurately. So whatever findings that you have at the end of the internal audit, then you have to present it to the top management. Okay, truthfully and accurately, meaning all of the uh, findings no, wala pong ano, wala tayong tinatanggal sa mga findings natin. Third, due professional care, the application of diligence and judgment in auditing. Now, we have to be professional in the conduct of internal audit. Then, confidentiality, security of information because during the audit, you might, uh, you might encounter several information that may be confidential. No? So, dapat na pagkakatiwalaan po yung ating mga internal auditors. Then independence, the basis for the impartiality of the audit and objectivity of the audit conclusions. Of course, you cannot audit your own process. No? So that's uh, independence. So you have to make sure that when we uh, allot or assign auditors, that they will not be auditing their own process no? to observe impartiality and, of course, independence. Then evidence-based approach, the rational method for reaching reliable and reproducible audit conclusions in, systematic, in a systematic audit process. So again, if you will be raising findings, there should be evidence why you are raising such. And lastly, risk-based approach, an audit approach that considers risk and opportunities. Then let's talk about the timing of the audit. We have this seasonal peaks, no? You have to program the audit when we are not busy, so more time to audit, less disruption. Yan yung laging sinasabi, no? Pagkakonduct tayo ng audit pag wala masyadong ginagawa. No? So that we can really focus on the, uh, on the processes. No? While meron po tayong, uh, merong balik sa dyan, no? the opposite view is more likely if it will go wrong, it is more likely when we are busy. Therefore, this is when the effectiveness of the system will be tested. And therefore, maybe the best time to audit to evaluate the system. No? On the other hand, we are to conduct audit during the time that the organization is busy on the implementation of their management system. Kasi mas maganda, mas matitsak natin whether uh, despite that they are busy, they are still implementing their management system. No? Kasi me, pag medyo busy, no, nakakalimutan na that they have the procedures that they need to follow. Okay? The other consideration is shift work. The management principle engagement of people does not specify only on day shift workers. So audit program must address other shifts. Ang eh, um, normal kasi ginagawa ng mga auditors is that they conduct audit only on the day shift. But if your operation is 24-7, no, you, you are also working every Sunday, so you have to consider them also. Then allocation of auditors. Auditors should be independent of the activity being audited. Again, that is for impartiality wherever practicable and should in all cases act in a manner that is free from bias and conflict of interest. Auditors should remain object, uh, sh should maintain sorry, objectivity throughout the audit process to ensure that the audit findings and conclusions are based only on uh, audit evidence. Then lastly, for small organizations, it may not be possible for internal auditors to be fully independent of the activity. Say, for example, you, you really have limited people, lima lang. No? But you have to exert effort should be, uh, to remove the bias and encourage ob objectivity of these internal auditors. And during the audit, we use checklists no, as our guide. And what is the importance of this checklist or audit checklist na ginagamit po natin? Of course, First is to ensure all uh, areas are audited. Uh, if we have the checklist, at least we have guide and we are confident that we will not be missing any areas. Next, guide auditor to the evidence. Third, prompt the auditor to ask appropriate questions because yung checklist natin contains uh, at least guide questions you know, for them to be aware of the questions to be asked to the auditees. 
Next, direct the auditor to interrelated activities because the checklist could be could indicate the interrelated processes inside that particular organization or unit. Then checklist becomes a record of what was viewed and level of conformance. Then aids factual reporting if we are guided or if we have this evidence you know, or checklist. Then during the reporting, we can have a, a data you know, that could support our findings. And lastly, important record of the audit process. So evaluating the audit evidence, how do we do our audit? We always use the three-piece approach or yung ating, uh, yung aming pong methodology in audit. We have the people, paper, and practice. No? So people, this is the knowledge and understanding because we will be interviewing the personnel. No? We will be interviewing the process owners for us to gauge the competence of these people, the awareness of these people no? towards their processes. And that is the apparent future. Kasi kung anong alam nila, Eventually, yan din naman yung i-apply nila in the future. No? In practice, physical uh, activities. So we will be observing the actual practice during the audit. Say, for example, if we will be auditing the front desk office. No? So you have to observe no? how do they practice their tasks. And lastly, paper, no? records, data, files, and report. So whatever uh, documented information required to be maintained and to be retained should always be present no? during the audit because that will serve as evidence of the implementation of their quality management system. Say, for example, if based on procedure, this record should be uh, provided, this record should be accomplished by the customers, then during the audit, this record should also be presented. So everything must be matched and cross-checked against other information. So dapat consistent po yung people, paper, and practice natin. So example, no, kung ano pong alam ng tao natin, should always be the ones being practiced by them or should always be the ones uh, indicated in our own procedure. So in summary, now that we are in pandemic, QS, uh, QMS implementation should not be affected. In fact, the more that it should be strengthened. If needed, necessary adjustment, uh, adjustments must be carried out as long as quality of products and services is not compromised. So if you will be using no, during the internal audit a, an online platform, then you have to indicate or uh, you have to state it in your audit plan or in your audit program that the audit will be conducted online. Then basically internal audit and management review should be conducted to ensure uh, quality management system implementation is effective. Then this may be done online, but methodology must be defined and agreed upon. Again, if you will be conducting the management review and the internal audit online, all of the process owners should be aware that it should be conducted as such. And competency and impartiality of internal auditors should be considered when conducting the internal audit. Okay? So that's it for my presentation for ISO, uh, ISO audit. Okay? Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Quinto, for that brief but uh, very comprehensive discussion on quality management systems. So as you say, our end goal in quality management is to make our customers satisfied and happy. So moving on to our last speaker. So our last speaker is the current finance manager at the Bayview Park Hotel Manila and a consultant of Leyte AgriCorp, the first bioethanol plant in the Philippines since 2009. He had diverse professional experience in finance where he held positions such as the Chief Ex uh, Accountant at Makati Agro Trading, Accounting Manager at Distilleria Bago, Comptroller at Tao Commodity Trader Incorporated, and AVP Finance and Administrative Manager at General Agri Foods International. He is also a part-time training consultant at John Clements Consultants Incorporated. He was also a former president of the Hotel and Restaurant Financial Officers of the Philippines from 2006 to 2010. Ladies and gentlemen, our fourth speaker, Mr. Eduard Vino. Welcome, sir. Thank you for inviting me to your uh, webinar and it's a privilege to speak with your group. Thank you. And also thank you for that uh, nice introduction. Better than had I prepared my own. 
<laughs> okay. So, uh, as by way of background, I was invited, but I was asked by Caris uh, to be uh, your speaker for this morning. And, uh, Car and I, how can I refuse Caris? Caris is one of my best uh, employee in Bayview. Anyway, you know that Caris is the best cost controller in the Philippines two times, our D. So now let me talk about uh, total quality management. Actually, I've heard your the speakers ahead of me and they have very nice presentations that what I have prepared. So I'll be talking about uh, more on the practical stuff about total quality management, especially during this time of the pandemic. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. So um, first, let me give you the big why. Why are we talking about total quality management? How important is total quality management in the hospitality industry? Now, I'm citing a uh, few examples. Actually, there are four. Number one is Hilton Hotels. Do you know that Hilton Hotels has one million rooms scattered over 6,478 properties across 18 brands worldwide. So just imagine if you are the guest, you expect that Hilton Manila experience is the same as that in the US. So that's how important total quality management is for the Hilton brand. We have Conrad. In the Philippines, there's also Conrad in Hong Kong. I've stayed in Conrad, Hong Kong, and it's very nice. And of course, let's also introduce our most famous mascot, Jollibee. Now, Jollibee has 5,900 stores worldwide, 185 billion system-wide sales before COVID, but they have their own shares of quality problems. Number one, uh, first in our mind was the uh, towel incident in BGC. And the store has to close for three days for retraining. And are you familiar with the hashtag chicken in 2014? What happened then was in August 1, 2014, the company mi uh, migrated their system from Oracle to SAP. And during the migration, there was a glitch. Their inventory system and purchasing system uh, encountered some major problems and that's why they were not able to order chicken. So for 15 days, they have to close down 72 stores. So you can see, you can just imagine how important total quality management system is for Jollibee. And now let's talk about <clears throat> the celebrity chef, Wolfgang Pak. Uh, he has this uh, chain of high-end steakhouses all over the world. The, the brand is uh, Cut, C-U-T. And I tried their uh, steak in uh, Singapore. And it's very delicious. The experience is very nice. And how can our celebrity chef maintain quality all over the world if he is not present everywhere? So... We can also see how important total quality management is for Wolfgang Pak. And now let's talk about <clears throat> the cheapest one Michelin star restaurant in the world, famous for its $2 chicken rice, Hawker Chan. Have you tried eating in Hawker Chan? Yeah. It was for me uh, novelty. Mas masarap pa rin yung manok natin. Now, but uh, again, 
it got its Michelin star. But unfortunately, this year they lost it. And why? Maybe they have problem with their total quality management because they cannot uh, maintain their quality because the chicken rice has to be cooked in the store, not through uh, commissary. So that's where they encountered the problem. And again, the old guy cannot be present all over the world. So that's the reason why big companies, high-end, low-end, small companies need quality. Now, in order to uh, maintain quality, let's talk about the basics first. Basic muna tayo, no? Now, let me introduce to you this uh, gap model. No, I call this uh, actually just to sound uh, like a PhD class. So I have to put the name of the authors no, for acknowledgement, for citation. No? This one was uh, designed by Parasuraman, Zaitam, Zaitam and Berry in 1985. And uh, this uh, model is uh, what I would like to use in my presentation about total quality management. Now, we call this the gap quality, a uh, gap model of service quality. So if you notice this picture, there is actually uh, two components. The first one, the top portion is about the customer. And the bottom portion is about the company. And if you notice, I don't know if you can see it in your slide, but since you're going to be given one as uh, your material, you can see gaps in between. Like uh, there's a gap between understanding customer needs and customer expectation, gap between understanding customer needs and service delivery uh, policy, gap between uh, service delivery policy and deliver, uh, service delivery and gap between external communication and service delivery. And there's also gap number five, which is gap between customer expectation and the customer perception. So these are very basic, but this can help us develop a sound framework on how to deliver total quality to our product or service. Focus on the customer. So the first gap, is about knowledge gap. How much do you know about your customer? No, so don't I mag focus? No, so palaging let's talk about customer expectation. So uh, you can examine your uh, how you understand your customer, like by targeting the market, segment the market. So that's how you understand the customer. No, you you have to understand the profile of your customer. So you cannot be a provider for all kinds of customer. No? So you have to focus on that one. So how well do you know your customer? Number two is the policy gap. Now, this is between understanding your customer needs and your policies and standards that you have developed for your product or service. So important yun kasi yung design mismo ng process mo eh kaya bang imit yung understanding mo sa customer okay and number three yung delivery gap no so yung bang standard mo yun parin yung actual na niluto mo di ba the recipe could be your policy then when the food is served to the customer <clears throat> yun ba yung pareho doon sa recipe? O yung bang room mo? Yun ba yung design ng room mo? Yung bang amenities doon sa room mo? Yun ba yung actually nandoon sa room? And then you have the communication gap. Ito yung number four. No? Ito, <clears throat> this is a typical problem for fast food restaurants. You have doon sa counter, meron doon mga pictures of the food, remember? 
then when you order oh, laki no ong chicken hindi ko na babanggitin yung brand kasi baka ma-demanda tayo dito o kaya ang burger ang laki di ba? pero pagdating ng food maliit so there's a problem between yung sa communication di ba? iba iba itsura so what was promised may diferensya doon sa what was delivered okay and there, then there is number 5 ito number 5 ito yung medyo tricky kasi minsan yung customer hindi niya alam kung ano yung gusto niya so ito hindi mo na mapoproblema to hulaan mo na lang na so as a, being a service provider, whether you're a hotel or whether you're a restaurant, you focus on gaps number one to number four. Yung number five, learn as you go. Okay? So, uh, you can read about this. You can, you can read about this at Google. You just search for this uh, model and uh, learn from it na lang doon. No? But, these are the basics. So focus on the customer. Then, number two, <clears throat> meron tayo dapat playbook. Okay? Yung playbook natin, sometimes you don't have to invent it. Nandyan na yan. Uh, I actually, I like the presentation of uh, Lee Majors. Saludo ako sa'yo. Magaling. Okay. Uh, so I learned a lot from you kasi I'm also in the hotel business. Pero alam mo, problem kasi sa hotel, especially if you are a small hotel, kanya-kanya, di ba? No? So learn as you go tayo. Wala tayong manual. So good thing that big hotels, meron silang ganito. No? Actually, you can also download this uh, um, manual from... Google. You just look for that uh, ano, itong Hilton Garden Inn Standards, United States. Alam mo, maganda dito sa standard na to. This is uh, a playbook na marami ka na matutunan. You can learn a lot. No? Number one, ikwento na sa'yo kung ano yung reservations. Yung procedure, nandun na lahat. O, pati yung pag-welcome ng guest, anong dala dapat ng driver, nandyan na. Ano itsura ng room? Ano itsura ng bathroom? Nandiyan na lahat. Gano'ng kalaki yung TV? Ilang bed? Ano yung food and beverage? Ano yung laman ng business center? So kahit saan yung guest, he will expect the same kind of service. Na? So you can gain a lot of insights from here and pwede copy-paste mo na lang. Uh, wala namang nakakahiya pag nangopya ka eh. As long as you copy from the best. Because copying is ano, is the greatest form of flattery. Tama ba yun? Uh, okay? Now, <clears throat> isa pa, playbook number two. Ito naman yung QSR. Alam niyo yung QSR? Siguro familiar na kayo niyan, ano? Quick service restaurant. Okay, so... Again, copying, sabi ko nga, is the greatest form of flattery. Diba? So, actually, pwede ka na mangupi sa kanya. Patay na ito eh. Diba? Si, buhay pa si Michael Keaton, pero yung si Ray Kroc patay na yan. No? He's the founder of McDonald's. Have you watched that uh, movie? Uh -uh, diba? Makita mo doon yung efficiency no Ilang seconds dapat ang pag-flip ng burger. Seconds siya, hindi minutes. Ha? Oh, paano ang the most efficient way of designing the layout of your kitchen? Uh -huh. Ano yung pinaka magandang combination ng product offering? Yan. So, I don't have to talk about this kasi this is my assignment to you. Dalawa na assignment ko sa inyo, ha? You read about that Hilton brand standard and watch the movie. Oh, maganda, di ba? Enjoy lang tayo kasi PhD naman tayo eh. Kayo pala, hindi ako kasali. Ano? Uh, so, adult learning kasi dapat should be fun. 
No? Huwag masyado seryoso yung buhay. Matanda. Alam mo ba buhay ng tao, sabi sa Bible, 70 years old lang. So don't waste time. Enjoy life. Di ba? Uh, Superman ka if you can reach 80. Okay, so what's this movie? You can learn a lot of insights. Okay? Now, <clears throat> dito na tayo sa COVID. Let's talk about COVID. This is now the reality. Uh, what is the reality? Adapt or die. Ganun lang. Adapt or die. Gusto mo pang magtuloy sa negosyo, sabi nga ni Lee Majors kanina, you have to adapt. Uh, adjust ka. Now, let me share with you that right picture. No? So, you can see yung recovery industries that's in blue and that uh, orange one is, uh, or the, I don't know what the color of this one, but it's close to orange. Yung industries needing assistance. Yung nasa taa, yung blue, ito yung mga naka-L, uh, naka-V curve. If you notice yung shape niya, parang letter V, no? Yan no? letter V siya. Oh. Yan. If you can see my pointer, naka-letter V siya. Mabilis siya nag-bounce. Pero tayo, we are in the hospitality industry. Some of you are in food. Some are you in travel. Naka-letter L tayo. So saan tayo dyan? Wala pa tayo sa bottom. Sadly, wala pa tayo sa bottom, no? Uh, so yun yung reality. So the question is, how can we survive? So the only way to survive is to adapt. Now, let's talk about a classic example, yung binanggit natin kanina about Jollibee. Do you know that Jollibee, yung chicken joy nila, Kahit COVID, pwede pa rin tuloy yung chicken joy. Hindi pa rin chicken sad. Why? Because you can eat your chicken joy at home. Have you, have you tried ordering yung chicken joy nila na uh, marinated? Ikaw na magluto sa bahay? Actually, I, I haven't tried this one, but somebody told me about this. So that got me curious. So yun pala, yung experience mo, sometimes you have to adjust no para ma-maintain mo pa rin yung experience noong customer mo later on we're going to talk about rooms we're going to talk about your in-house dining di ba adapt or die so palagi survival mode lang tayo ngayon huwag kayong mag-isip ng profit kasi darating din yan eh basta kayo palaging top of mind Yan lang palagi top of mind kayo. Okay? Now, so, TQM. Sabi natin, through the eyes of the customer, COVID or without COVID. Diba? Siguro ito nasa right, palagi yun na nakikita yan. Eh. Kahit anong outlet, eh, no? Ha? Oh, nasa CR yan, nasa lobby yan, everywhere. Diba? So, ano yung strategy mo? Oh, ito yung reality. The always no longer apply. Oh, sabi nga ni Lee Majors, sorry ha, I have always to cite Lee Majors kasi true blue hotelier to eh. No? No? Wala na. Wala na yung dati. Kung ikaw yung kusinero ngayon, ikaw yung chef ngayon, you have to do other things na. Kung ikaw yung dating FO, dapat yung ibang work sa FO, pwede mo nang gawin. No? Ganun na ngayon. Okay? Tapos, yung sabi nga ni Arman kanina, Arman, sabi niya, yung misan, dati binibigay mo yung needs. Di ba? Ngayon din na. Once na. Ah, no frills na ngayon. Kaya dito na papasok oh, yung health and safety. No, we can not overemphasize about health and safety. Yan na ngayon. Wala na tayong magagawa dyan. Tapos, dapat yung health and safety mo, hindi yung sarili mong standard. Dapat yung government standard. Now, just to give you a, an example lang on this one. When you check in Bayview, dalawa entrance namin. 
regular guest and quarantine guest. Pag quarantine guest ka, iba yung entrance mo, iba yung kwartong pupuntahan mo. May check-in area ka doon. Hindi ka ihahalo. Oh. Doon mo na rin kunin yung key card mo. Uh, pag check out, doon ka rin dadaan. Uh, tapos we also provide for ano, RT-PCR test in pre, on premise. Meron din kaming dedicated room para dyan. Uh, so yun na yung in ngayon. Wala na yung, <clears throat> minsan yung lobby mo, wala nang naglilinger sa lobby mo. Wala na. Display na lang yung pang Instagram yun. Uh, okay. Na, ito very important. No? If you focus on the customer, tingnan mo palagi, you have to be honest. Nalala mo yung gap kanina, yung five gap analysis, di ba? Na meron yung isa, na yung service delivery tsaka yung external communication. Kailangan match yun. Huwag kang mag-promise doon sa internet ng iba kaysa ibibigay mo. Lahat ng gusto mong mangyari sa customer pagpasok niya sa guest, kailangan yun din gagawin mo. Kaya kami nakilala kami, baby, dati. We are the only hotel who warn our guests about pickpockets. Noon pa yun. Kasi nasa, malat, nasa ermita kami. No? So we got some comments, pero marami din nagsabi, buti yun, honest kayo. Diba? So, ganun din panahon ng COVID. We have to be honest with our guests. Ngayon, kaya dito papasok yung customer engagement. Dapat hindi nawawala ito. So, kung meron kayong, na, if you're present sa mga OTAs, mga online uh, hotel booking website, diba? may mga comment trip advisor, sagutin nyo. Oh, very important niya na customer engagement is key. Tapos itong higher prices, <clears throat> you have to be honest also. No surprises. <coughs> kasi nang minsan problema eh, no? Tinatago natin kasi takot tayo baka hindi mag-book. Di ba? So you have to be honest. Kasi if you're honest, customers won't mind. Ito yung challenge. Yung food panda tsaka grab food. Di ba? Kumakain ng profit natin yan. Kaya tanong, are you willing to share your profit? Merong ibang mga <clears throat> mga ibang restaurant, they survive despite the proliferation of grab food. Uh, siguro they save on other things na lang. ba? Diba? Para to keep their business going. <coughs> Sorry. Then, ito naman, isang threat din ito, panahon ng COVID. Ito yung the, the threat of the rise of the five-star home cooks. Uh, dahil sa COVID, marami nang magaling magluto ngayon dahil sa YouTube, di ba? Uh, so, dapat you should be ahead of the game. Uh, so, yun yung mga, uh, some insights lang on how you can prepare or survive or adapt during this time of the pandemic. Iba na laro ngayon. Now, <clears throat> I have another assignment for you. Oh, ito, basa naman din. Inspirational naman ito, yung the gold, the new gold standard of by Joseph Micheli. Uh, ito naman, this is about the Ritz Carlton Hotel. Alam nyo naman Ritz Carlton, di ba? Kung gusto mo ng standard, ito yun. No? This uh, book talks about how you deal with the guest. Yung interaction mo, nandyan yan, maganda siya. I, I've read the book, meron pa siya isang book about Starbucks, pero for this case, maybe you can try reading this book. So I guess uh, uh, my 15 minutes is up and uh, you're, we're open for questions. So, kung if you're going to give me another five minutes, I have some trivia for you. Okay lang ba, Mr. Irvin? Yes, go ahead, Sir R.D. Uh, pero tell me when my time is up, ha? Kasi I can be as talkative as your other speakers. <laughs> okay, so ito, 86. Familiar ba kayo, 86? Ano yan? 
out of stock, di ba? Again, you have to try to see how to minimize this 86 kasi nasisira yung guest experience. Eh. Di ba? Okay? So, I don't have to explain about 86 kasi hotelier naman tayo lahat. So, alam nyo yung 86 na yan. And itong room service, isang isang part of the service na provide sa room, ano yun? Yung turn down service. Actually, joke lang yan. Sabi ni Dilbert, tawag siya sa housekeeping. I would like to decline your turn down service tonight so I can have some privacy. Sabi naman ng housekeeping, we're going to do it anyway. Good luck finding your staff after we randomly remove uh, move it. What? Sabi niya. Sabi ni Wilbert, you can't do that. You can't do that. I hereby turn down your turn down of your turn down service. Diba? Goodbye oh, to your char phone charger. Actually, <clears throat> again, nabanggit na rin ito kanina ni Lee Majors that uh, during this time of the pandemic, mag-iba na rin yung service natin sa rooms. Yung turn down service, wala na. Diba? Pag check-in, new linens, bago lahat. No? Vacant ready siya. Paglabas niya, tsaka palang vacant dirty. So, do all throughout the stay, vac ano yun, dirty yun. Diba? Unless magpa-request siya ng change of towels, ganun na lang. Kasi bakit? We are a quarantine hotel. Okay? So, yun lang yung gusto ko i-share sa inyo. And for that quality, may mention about quality, you can do a research about the V model. No, para you can prepare pag meron kayong quality audit. No, pag nag-design kayo ng quality, may din nyo tingnan ito. No? First, dapat mag-usap yung business case and that uh, release. Ano yan? Normally, sa any organization, pag may nag-present na consultant, ang mag-usap yung owner at yung consultant. Doon pa lang dapat malinaw na yung deliverables. Diba? Tapos pag bumaba na yon, kausap na yung business analyst sa kayong department manager na. Tapos down the line yan. You can follow this V model. Check nyo na lang sa internet. And again, that's how I learned. So I know that's how you're going to learn also about quality. So again, thank you very much for the invitation. And, uh, and I wish all of us well. And we hope to prosper after this COVID. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Grinio. So we surely acquire so much um, information from you coming from the hospitality perspective as well. And your discussion on the practical applications of service quality model and quality management in the new normal was very um, comprehensive. So we are very grateful for privilege blessed and happy to have the opportunity to listen and learn from all our invited resource speakers. So we will now proceed to the panel discussion. So we have actually a set of questions here from our attendees and any anybody from the four uh, honorable speakers is free to answer also. So uh, to our participants from the Facebook Live, you may also um, send your questions through the comment section and for the Zoom participants, please use the chat box. All right, so we yes. request the, the four speakers to kindly turn on your camera for the panel discussion. Um, I request again our four uh, speakers to kindly uh, turn on your camera for the panel discussion. Thank you. Okay, so we are waiting for our um, speakers. So indeed, it was a very fruitful discussion. Thank you so much to our dear um, speakers. Okay, so I guess we can start now the panel discussion. 
Okay, so we have here the first question. So how do you sustain quality management during this time of COVID-19 pandemic? And does anything change in the formulation, execution of quality assurance? So that's a question from our attendees. So anybody from the panel could answer also. Uh, may I take the first question? Yes, go yes. ahead, Sir Ardi. Yeah, so there are a lot of changes that have to be implemented. No, uh, Let's talk about food, food and beverage business. Our coffee shop is closed until now. Maybe for a few days open shop because it was open for a while, but despite that, there are only a few people who uh, eat in the coffee shop because of the fear of COVID. So right now, the food being served are pre-packed. No? So that was served in, outside the room. So that's the major change. And of course, the food almost remain the same. May content changes lang, but uh, the menu is limited. And when it comes to the room, as I mentioned earlier, wala na yung mga turn down service for now. So, but we make sure that the room is clean uh, before the guest enters the room. Thank you so much, um, Sir RD. So do, do we have any additional insights from our uh, other speakers? Okay, uh, may I have the... Uh... Again. So, when we are talking about quality versus uh, the pandemic, actually, when we are talking about quality, we are dealing about cost. Okay. So, in finance principle, quality versus cost. So, sabi nga ni Sir RD, we shifted no? from the usually uh, standard to the new normal way of delivering food services, etc. So, before, Pag mo yung pagkain with the uh, businesses of hospitality, with restaurants, etc. Of course, plating or kaya buffet, di ba? But they change us now, di ba? So ang ginagawa, package. When we are talking about packaging, of course, it's about cost of yung mismo mga box. Gagamit ka ba ng box na paper or a box yeah. na plastic or styro? So if you are on the environmental concern with the ISO, so lalo na on environment, so, of course, dapat gumamit kang paper waste, di ba? Even uh, food, yung mga drinks mo, yung paper na, no? Kaya lang, the problem here is, yung straw na paper, yung paper na cup, kung malayo yung delivery, di ba, umaano yung quality ng taste, no? Doon sa drinks. On the other hand, kung paper yung ginamit doon sa food, minsan, yung paper, kung nalayo din yung delivery, umahawa yung paper. So, dapat meron kayong quality control. So, anong paper na merong parang silver lining para hindi humawa yung paper? ba? So, may ganun tayong process. And then, titingnan din natin yung costing, no? Costing analysis. Cost, it's look like cost-benefit analysis, ba? So, cost sa'yo, benefit sa kanila. On other way, it's a vice versa. So, ano yung ano? Parang the principle of reciprocity, okay? So, customer will pay, they're willing to pay, but of course, you should produce quality. Both food and also drinks. On the other hand, I traveled as well. No, I traveled in Boracay uh, during the pandemic. So, di ba, kakaiba. Noong time na nag-open, time din na, na-open at nakatravel ako sa Boracay. And in Boracay, kung mapapansin nyo, meron na din silang tinatawag na car PRs. The, the question is, nabubuhay yung turista in Boracay most likely with party-party. It's a big challenge, no? So, paano mo papalitan yung drinks na mga alcoholic drinks, etc. versus healthy drinks, pero they will still enjoy? And paano mo gagawin yung benefit ng quality ng standard na mabibigay pa rin doon sa service ng uh, within the area kung saan magda-dine in yung mga tao? Pero of course, sabi nga ni Sir, no, yung kanina, yung isa nating uh, second, tapos naging third speaker siya, uh, yung social distancing. Pero it's still quality. It's about quality of service pa rin. So, look like, it's look like massage therapy and mga spa. How you can still give a special massage therapy and spa kung ba, uh, walang interaction dahil may social distancing din, di ba? Pero this 
industry is kailangan malapit kayo because somehow like parlors etc so paano mo bibigyan ng quality kung magkalayo kayo hindi ka naman pwedeng nagugupit na kaganoon ka am i right so hindi ka pwedeng magmassage na malayo di ba so anyway this is about social innovation it's about clean innovation and it's about paradigm shift thank you thank you so much um sir arman so um I guess we can proceed to the next question. So the next question focuses on the strategic management uh, discussion. So the question is, uh, what were your main considerations as you lay out your strategic management plans in today's business environment and also with the pandemic? So anybody from our panel could uh, answer. So um, again, sir, the question is, um, what were your main considerations as you lay out your strategic management plans in today's business environment and also with the COVID-19 pandemic? Okay. 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 Okay ng government regarding sa IATF. So, that's the time that you apply your tactical plan. So, how will your business operate from time to time within the SOHOL 15 days? Kung how many percent lang ang pwedeng i-cater? Like 30%, 50%, or 10%. And from time to time, kung mababalitaan natin, minsan tumataas yung case ng COVID. Okay? So, pag tumaas yung case, ang nangyayari, babaguhin na naman, we go to ECQ, to MECQ, to GCQ, etc. So you have your tactical plan. On the other hand, you should have also your strategic plan. That will be a long-term plan. How about will the, the pandemic end soon? No, it will not end. Sabi ko nga kanina, merong apat, di ba? Every hundred years, laging may pandemic. Pero kung mapapansin nyo, the Great Plague, the Cholera, the Flu, and now the COVID-19, lahat yan hindi na mawawala. It will be staying in our environment. So sabi nga ni Sir RD, how will you adapt? Okay, that's the best thing. How will you adapt? So that's why we are doing vaccination to adapt on health on a healthy style on a health manners. On other hand, how will you adapt your operations on the so-called pandemic new normal? It will not become new normal. It become a normal now. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Sir Arman. Okay, so how about from our other speakers? Uh, I'd like to share my lang my thoughts, no. So, uh, thank you, Sir Arman, for that uh, sharing your strategies. And tama lahat yon, no. Everything is uh, spot on, correct, no. Ah, uh, sa strategy kasi when you talk about strategy and tactics, tama yon. You have to consider lots of factors. Isa yon yung government, no. Yung Christ, yung Uh, quarantine restrictions. Kung ano yon, then you adapt, no? Again, uh, I think maybe pwede nyo i-consider as part of your strategy yung relationship mo with government. Uh, minsan, merong ibang uh, hotel na they want to cater to a certain type of market. Pero minsan, you have to adapt then, no? maybe consider dealing with government. Uh, so, maraming pwede, like, alimbawa, PR, tingnan mo, kasi minsan, pagka mahina ka doon sa PR, nawawala ka sa top of mind ng government. Uh, like, just to cite an example, maybe it was providential lang. Uh, at the start of the lockdown, uh, Mayor Isko was 
asking the hotels to provide free rooms to the frontliners, medical frontliners. Uh, we were uh, our GM was first to respond to that call, and that gave us good PR. Now, so strategy again, maybe you marketing mo. Instead of marketing, focus ka on PR kasi PR is also marketing. Uh, so, yun yung gusto ko i-share lang kasi practical insight lang to, real life example lang on our hotel. Uh, we did not expect that we, we were given an award because of that. No? And uh, we got some business also from local government as well as national. So, don't forget about government in your strategy. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, speakers. And we have the last question here, which focuses on the corporate finance discussion. So how does your organization cope with the financial crisis experienced during the pandemic and what financial recovery strategies were implemented to ensure a better future for the organization when the pandemic finally comes to an end? Okay, so number one, I already mentioned earlier, uh, before that, meron na tayong tinatawag sa mga ano muna, no? punta muna tayo sa different kinds of business because iba-iba yung approach. No? Pero most likely ang affected is micro, small, and medium enterprises. Okay, ayun yung unang apektado. Micro, small, and medium enterprises. At marami sa kanila ang nagsara. So kaya nagkaroon tayo ng tiyatawag na resiliency approach. So kaya the government now has a so-called gone negotiable program with the Department of Trade and Industries and truly coordinating, like sabi ni Sir Ardi, coordinate with the government. So coordinating with the Department of Trade and Industries, with the Department of Labor and Employment, with the Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industries, etc. Okay, coordination yan. Well coordinated. Why? Because number one, nung una nagkaroon tayo ng problem with dahil nag-closure, so walang trabaho yung mga tao, paano ngayon, no? paano sila, and paano yung uh, shifting, etc. paano yung policy. That's why nag-issue dati nang nagkaroon ng tayo, na tinatawag tayo, no? through the Department of Labor and Employment, nagkaroon tayo ng tulong sa mga na, na op na mga kababayan natin. No? Sa so off-site sila. So magkano yung binigay? So nagkaroon ng pantawid, parang it's look like pantawid pamilya. It's not the ano, actual the, for the poor, but it's for the laborer. And then after that, no, nagkaroon, no, nagkaroon ng bayanihan 1, ng bayanihan 2, tapos iba't ibang factor like for the fisheries, for the labors ng MSMEs, etc. Tapos, ang ginawa ng government, kung mapansin natin, nagkaroon ng ruling sa Banyanehan 1 and 2, kung saan uh, yung interest rate ng mga loans, di ba? May mga loans. Nag-loan yung mga businesses sa mga malaking kumpanya or financial institution that itong loan, para hindi siya ma-default payment, yung interest rate, hinult muna. Okay? Pansamantalang itinigil. Kung hindi man itinigil, nagkaroon ng stagnant payment. Okay? And so on and so forth. But the challenge nowadays is within the company level. So like this time, malapit na ang December. Dahil malapit na December, lalo ngayon October na, usually government nga, from October 15 and so on and so forth, bigayan na ng 13-month pay. Question, paano mo mabibigyan ng 13-month pay yung mga tao mo kung mismo yung negosyo mo ay in default na? Yung iba nga, nag-declare na ng bankruptcy like PAL. Diba? At marami na ding na layoff. So dapat meron tayong plan, no? Meron tayong tinatawag na strategy for human resource. Again, sabi ng ating speaker, human resource is very important thing. Hindi kayang palitan ang HR, ang ang people, ang personnel ng robots. Okay? Even we have robotics. So somehow, what is your plan for them in the future? Okay? Kung ngayon magkakaroon ng malaki ang layout Diba? Dati nagkaroon na din. And starting point today, nagkakaroon pa rin. And even buwabalik yung iba. That will be your strategy magkakaroon ng shifting dahil buwabalik na economy. Dahil dapat kung ganun karami yung iyong way ng nagtrabaho or workforce, paano mo siya na-ship para pareho pa rin nagkakaroon na yung standard na meron sweldo at may makukuha pa rin siya ng 13-month pay. At the end of the day, meron din tayong consideration with government policy, with the Department of Labor and Industry, and with the policy ng corporate world dahil may mga corporate, lalo na kung malaking kumpanya, meron siya ang tiyatawag na mga union or union. So, depende pa rin. It means at the end of the day, it's about relationship that matters. Thank you. 
Thank you so much, um, Sir Arman. Any additional um, insights from other speakers? Okay, are we? I guess uh, we are good already, no, with uh, the panel discussion. So at this point, we will now award the certificate of appreciation to our speakers. All right. So, Philippine Women University School of Hospitality Management awards this certificate of appreciation to Mr. Arman Vicente Cruz for being a guest speaker in the webinar entitled Re-Envisioning Industry Frontier Challenges, Trends, and Updates Amidst COVID-19 Pandemic, held on October 22, 2021 from 9 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. via Zoom and Facebook Live at the Philippine Women's University, Manila. Signed by uh, Dr. Edgar Moreno, our professor, and Dr. Ephraimuel Jose L. Abeliana, our dean, School of Hospitality and Tourism Management. And also, same citation given to Mr. Lee Majors Manalo Fahilan and Mr. Erwin F. Quinto, and also to Mr. Edward Pino. So, once again, thank you very much for sharing your time and expertise with us. So to our dear speakers, thank you so much for that very comprehensive discussion. So to provide us with a synopsis of what has transpired during the webinar, may I call on Ms. Joanne M. Nebrida. Ma'am Joanne? Yes, hello, good morning, everyone. First, we'd like to extend our um, gratitude to all our speakers who really um, took um, their time off for more just to be with us for today. I may say it was a wow. It is a very awakening talk that we have for today with a powerhouse of speakers that we have. Somehow it helped us in facing the sad but um, um, realistic realities that we need to face in the near future. Um, they have um, actually dissected a lot of realities about business, about economic situation, but like what they say, the show must go on. I may start with, um, I'm delighted with an eye-opening statement as Sir Arman walked us through the realities of disasters that we've been through in the past and how we were able to survive as an inherent attachment to the crisis to any businesses that we have. However, no matter how depressing it is, the talk was followed with optimistic nudge of strategies and push, especially when they introduced to us a demographic window that's going to transpire until the next coming years, that is from 2015 to 2050. It gave us a thought about the need to take risks and embracing the need to come up with a resiliency plan, not just for our businesses, but all the more for ourselves, to turn ourselves into men. And the metaphor to care for ourselves is some um, in some way with our customer, in same way with our customers. Lastly, with a battle, battle cry for all Filipinos, that is Tarana, Balik Tayo sa Pilipinas is indeed a twofold order as a Filipino customer and entrepreneur to go local. Uh, um, uh, we were also oriented about the uh, the ISO, which means uh, it's just for time for me to know that. Um, it's really ISO, ISOs, which means quality. So it's a twofold challenge for those who are really um, going for quality that customers don't just need quality, but they demand quality. So the risk, if not management, if, if not properly managed, entails a lot of consequences. So they say that um, what is very striking for me is this, um, the consistency is the key that be three piece on the in evaluating auditing evidence that is the paper, the practice, and the people that should um work together and the consistency is the key. But what is very striking for me is when is the best time to conduct audit? Of course, all of us um goes through a lot of um total quality. We submit our institutions, whether it's in the academy or in the industry, to to auditing, but um, what is really striking is when is the best time to conduct an audit? If it will go wrong, it's more likely when we are busy. And um, another 
takeaway that I I that that was left to me is that pandemic is not an excuse for not following quality standards. And the talk about uh, of surly majors about the stigma of the quarantine facilities was really striking. And um, in the midst of this pandemic is a call for strength and a visionary and they have um, given us suggested initiatives and interventions like um, in the midst of these challenges we have to look forward for something that will um, still help us in holding on to our ideals so that, it, that is nothing could replace that warmth that we give to our guests and of course we are um, given nothing replaces first-hand experience as we hear a lot of assignments <laughs> from Sir RD, which is really awakening for all of us. And the be um, what strikes me the most is the best surprise and no sur surprise by Ray Pritzker. And he opened our eyes through the to the perspective of um, an opening of the vantage point to um, the COVID nineteen to the eyes of the customer, and um, he gave us some assignments like knowing the gap model. There's a classic gap model of service quality, which need, we need to be reminded from time to time. The need to have a TQM playbook. The need to adopt or die. That brought us to the hospitality realities of how businesses in the tourist hospitality industry operate during the pandemic and then help us to cope up to stay afloat in the survival mode industry. And um, of course, um, going through the last part, I was even listening. I can't stop to um, listen, even in the panel discussion that there's a need for the principle of reciprocity, the pandemic, if not sustaining, if not sustaining, should deliver quality. There's a need for quality innovation, clean innovation, and paradigm shift. And these hospitality leaders, um, the, the real challenge is for us, especially those who are immersed in the academy, how are we going to build um, these future leaders in industry to come up with tactical plan, strategic plan, and let's not discount the efforts that the government has been extending to our industry for a very long time. So I'm um, having goosebumps right now. I really had a good um, time and I really learned a lot in this activity. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much to all the speakers. I would agree to that, Ma'am Joan. And also to give us the closing message, may we call on Mr. Raymond A. Carlos, our chairman for today's webinar. Sir Raymond. Good day, each of, each of you. Let me begin this closing message by again thanking for our informative webinar guest speaker, Mr. Armand Cruz, Mr. Di Fagelan, and Mr. Erwin Quinto, and Mr. El Reguion. Your insight this morning has paved the way to realization of the goal and objectives of this endeavor, the revisioning of the hospitality and tourism industry frontier the challenges updates amidst the COVID-19 pandemic. We all know our industry has greatly affected and the operation have continued to be disturbed by advanced strategic management, total quality management, and corporate finance organizations should be also recalibrated in coping with during this challenging time. We own the success of the webinar to our dear university president, Mr. Marco Alfredo and Benitez, the Dean of the School of Food Science and Technology, Hospitality and Tourism, Dr. Jose Epremuel Abeliana, and our very supportive professor, Dr. Edgar M. Moreno. This event would be possible with your guidance and mentorship from the planning stage up to successful implementation. To all the attendees of this learning session, our deepest gratitude goes for supporting our activities for being instrumental to its success. To the all organizer, our efforts are now being realized. And let us congratulate everyone for the meaningful accomplishment. Let me end this message with a quote from Dalai Lama, which could be applied either personally in our industry. And I quote, 
despite of the difficulties, always keep optimist. We can overcome this difficult. The mental attitude himself will bring inner strength and self-confidence and end of the quote. Once again, thank you very much. God bless you all and stay safe. Thank you so much, um, Sir Raymond, for that very inspiring closing message. So these webinars will not be possible without the doctor and hospitality management class headed by our chairman, Raymond Carlos, and also would like to extend our utmost appreciation to our class advisor, Dr. Edgar Moreno, for his continuous guidance and support, not only in this webinar, but with our journey in the graduate school. Flash on the screen right now is the QR code for the evaluation form of our event. We would highly appreciate if you uh, go if you are going to send us your feedback on the webinar. So this shall also be a basis for the sending of the participants' e-certificate. Our evaluation team shall update you via email for your e-certificates. Also, please do not forget to like and share the official Facebook of the Philippine Women's University. You may also subscribe to the school's YouTube channel, hit the like button, and ring the notification bell for more webinar videos. Let us now thank the Lord and bring Him back the glory praise for the closing prayer. Father, we give thanks that you have allowed us to work together and serve you during this meeting. We thank you for your guidance to fulfill the agenda in this meeting. We ask your blessing upon our endeavors and upon all present today. May your love and grace continue to guide us in everything that we do, today and in the future. All these we pray in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Once again, thank you for sharing your precious time with us today. Stay safe, everyone, and enjoy the rest of the day. See you again on the future webinars. Happy weekend and mabuhay.